and we're live. Hey guys. All right. So I'm Mallory from the Quebec Homestead. As you guys know, I see there are nine people watching right now. We have Nicole, Colin, we have my dad, uh, Jean, Allo Papa, uh, Simon Forget. We have, hey Nate. Hey Nate, what's up? Uh, we have also a few other people of the Wood Squad that I've seen in here. We have David Outdoors. Awesome. Thank you guys for showing up. So this is my weekly live stream that uh, I held. And I had a really late last minute idea to have this special guest on with me. And I wrote her like an hour ago. And I said, you want to go live with me and talk about hardening off seedlings? And she said, yeah. So I'm really happy and I'm excited to have her on here. She is in Alaska and uh, she's in the same zone as I am. And so I found her channel around, I don't know, like a month ago, maybe a month and a half ago. And I'm just hooked. I, like, I really love her spirit, her personality. I just like, you know, you watch somebody and you just know, like, I could totally have a beer with that person. You know, that's, that's how I engage people, I guess. Um, so, hey, Cliff, Foxit Outdoors is here as well. And uh, so I am hardening off seedlings. Uh, I've been hardening them off for the past week. And of course, over the years, I have messed up. Like, I really did. Like, I've been too eager sometimes. You know, we have a really short growing season and we just get really eager to put things outside. And, and that happens. Uh, so we wanted to share with you how we do it. And uh, like, if it's for you starting your own seedlings, getting, the, getting the, them used from the lights to go outside, or if you buy them from the store, from a greenhouse, well, what to do with them when you get them? Because they don't necessarily tell you. So I'm going to pop Eskimo in Alaska here. She says it's funny the way that I pronounce it, Eskimo. Um, and uh, you'll get to meet her, how awesome of a person she is. So welcome. You're live. Hi, Mallory. Hey. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me here. You're very, I've very... I've never done a live. Yeah. So <laughs> she is getting her feet wet. And this is her first live on my channel, which I'm really excited about. And uh, yeah, so do you want to tell, tell everybody who you are and uh, just a little intro? Yeah, uh, my name is Annette Erickson, uh, also known as Eskimo in Alaska. And the reason my channel is called Eskimo in Alaska is I'm an Inupiaq Eskimo and I live in Unalakleet, Alaska, which is Northwest Alaska. Our zone is a 3A slash 3B zone. Uh, so we get tons of snow and I'm waiting for my last frost right now. So hopefully it'll work out very soon. And I actually have a lot to learn from Mallory. She's been doing this a while longer than me. And I'm so glad she found me because <laughs> she's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So uh, what is it's Annette, right? Annette? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what, what Annette is doing is she has a lot that's not hers and she is going to garden on that lot and which is cool, which not many people know that you can do that, but you can rent out land if you don't have it and garden on other people's yes. lands. There's a lot of people that do it out there. There's Curtis Stone that even wrote a book about it and he does market gardening on other people's yeah. lots in uh, British Columbia. And, uh, you know, yeah. I think that's really cool because I know a whole bunch of you are like, Mallory, you have 200 acres. Like, can you give me some? And I'm like, well, you know, I mean, but <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's, you know, another option that you guys can probably do. And so, all right. I see new, new people in the chat here. No short preparedness. Yeah, my, um, the, in Unalakleet, we have native corporations here, not just Unalakleet, but other villages. We have native corporations and my native corporation uh, does subsistence lots uh, where you can, because we have a lot of fish here because we have a river and an ocean and we um, go crab, people go crabbing and seal hunting and things like that. So they need a space to process all that food and uh, everything they gather. So yeah. What I asked my native corporation for was if I could use it just for a garden and chickens and they did approve it. Um, so we're working through all of that right now and getting it all started. Um, I also have garden beds made out of pallets and I'm also using Hugo culture in my own lot, the lot that my home is on. Um, but I'm maxed out on space for that. 
Yeah. That's so cool. Awesome. So right now, uh, have you started all your seeds or have you went and bought seeds, uh, seedlings? Um, in Uniloquit, there's, there's no place to go buy seedlings. Um, right. There's no, there's two stores here and they're grocery stores. Uh, so the only way to get seedlings is to grow them myself. Um, I do have a grow tent that I use, but I only use that for tomatoes and peppers. Uh, everything else, I start it and I put it on the windowsill. Like I have Egyptian walking onions right now on the windowsill. Uh, one of my pepper plants would not fit in the grow tent. Uh, so I put it also on the windowsill. Uh, so yeah, anyway. All right, cool. I start like probably, I would say 90% of my seeds, but I don't have enough room to like start flowers and stuff like that. So I go to the greenhouse yeah. and see, so I got some marigolds this week and I got uh, some stevia, which is so awesome. Wow. Stevia <laughs> tastes like sugar. It tastes like sugar. Oh Seriously, my gosh. yeah, the leaves are so so sweet. So I'm really excited to be able to mm -hmm. to work with it and to grow it and to see what I can do with it. I got three plants. I had no idea at all that you could grow stevia. Um, it's that's a beautiful looking plant. Wow. I mean, I knew people grew grew it, but I didn't know that you were growing that and that you could do that in zone three. So that's cool. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if it's a it's if it's a perennial. It's probably not. I'm I'm still experimenting with it, but um. So what I started yeah. were uh, tomatoes, peppers, all my herbs. I got uh, a whole bunch of things. I'm gonna start my beets here soon, and I'm gonna be starting um trying to figure out everything. Like everything's outside right now because it's really hot out, and it's the first night that everything's just gonna be outside. I'm gonna gauge the temperature but the tomatoes are still going to come inside because they're you know I, I need to baby them I just transplanted yeah. them so um so that's one thing uh, yeah. I uh just got my tran my tomato transplant uh video out and that was last week and so I'm just hardening off the little plants outside which I got one of them that got sunburned so I'm going to be able to show you guys that so I don't know what your method is, uh, Annette, but I would really like to know what, what you do to harden off your plants. Uh, what I did last year was I did the windowsill thing, and then I just, during the day, uh, I would move them to our cold frame. We have two little cold frames. They're technically called flower houses. That's what the company calls them. They're just little cold plastic greenhouse looking things. And I bring them out there in the daytime. And we have, right now, I think we have about 15 hours of daylight here in Unalcleet. Wow. So when that 15 hours is over, yeah, then I bring them in. Um, and we make sure that we position the cold frames nicely where the sun is always like, luckily my lot that, that my house is on is South facing. Yep. So we just make sure the cold frames are on the South facing, like the most South facing part. And then they just stay in the sun. So our plants go really fast in the cold frame. Um, but at night it gets down to about 39 degrees right now at night. So we bring them in. But I don't even think we have to. Um, we started red Russian kale, and it's been in the cold frame, and I started bringing it inside. But I quit doing that <laughs> because it wasn't necessary because the ground is so warm yeah. from the 15 or 16 hours of sunshine that it just keeps the cold frame warm for the f whatever hours are left in 24 cool. hours in a day. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so it's nice to have that all 24 hours. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the sunlight in Alaska is so awesome. I lived in Alaska for a year and I just still can't get over it. Mm -hmm. um, so I see yeah. there was a question here from Kathy from North Store Prep Stutter. She was asking, I think, where in Alaska are you from? Which you already mentioned, but I guess you can answer it again. Yeah, no, I'm in Unalakleet. I'm in Northwest Alaska. And if you look at the map of Alaska, where the Bering Sea is, uh, where along the Bering Sea, it's called the Norton Sound region. Um, and it's a community of about 750 people. 
And the only way to get here is by boat or snow machine or airplane. And right now, because of the coronavirus, <laughs> we don't have any passenger oh, yeah. service to you unless you go first to Nome, Alaska. I'm sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I forgot we can't say the C word or anything in the live stream. Yeah, I don't want to say that word. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> we can't we can't say it because uh, if I want to get monetized one day, if I want this video to be monetized and the computer yeah. picks it up, then uh, I probably it might get cut. Yeah, off, so. we said the word. <laughs> yeah, no, I've heard about that. I just completely forgot about it's it. Okay. But yeah, because of worldwide happenings. Yeah, yeah, we don't have passenger yeah. service here right now. All right. <sighs> so, um, how long is your growing season? It is probably from about a week from now up until the end of August or maybe the first couple weeks of September at the very most. So maybe 90 or 95 days or 100 days, which is why we have to definitely use the cold frame and yeah. a grow tent. Um, but I think next year I'm not going to rely on my grow tent uh, because I want to get used to not using electricity for absolutely everything. Okay. The, the Mindful Home says, uh, Jack says, you can say it now. I, I don't know. Are we allowed to say it now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want right. to talk about it anyway. What a bummer. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Colin, hardening off your plants is when you start your seeds underneath the artificial light. Okay. They, they need to get used to having that direct sunlight because or else they can sunburn and literally like they will burn and fry and that will like they they could they can survive that shock but you want to get them in the sun gradually so what i do is i get everything that's in under the lights and i get them in my little greenhouse that i have in front of my house which pretty much everybody has seen so so far and on a like a cloudy day I'll get them and I'll put them in the shade to just get them used to being in the outside temperature and then I'll bring them in uh, after like 15 minutes and then it'll be like a seven day process and so the next day I'll have them a little bit in the sun for like 15 minutes in the same temperature and then I'll bring them back in and so I do that gradually and every day I will add like an hour and then two hours, and then eventually I'll bring them outside and get them used to that direct, direct sunlight. Like I have to do it that way because if I bring them like directly from inside to outside when everything's ready, uh, it's too cold still here. So, I mean, you guys could probably yeah. do that in a hotter climate, but I just can't do that because it's like there's still snow on the ground when it's time for me to, to bring stuff inside the little greenhouse. And uh, yeah. what most people do are they go and like like my marigolds, you go buy them at the greenhouse at the nursery and they've been in a greenhouse with that UV protection, heated, like everything is just so pampered. And so they'll sell it to you, but they won't necessarily tell you that you have to get them used to that direct sunlight. So I've done the mistake. I literally would buy plants from there. I bring them outside and be like, okay, I'm going to pop them up. I'm going to put them outside. Burn, 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 burn. Yeah. I have a plant that got a little bit sunburned. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's brown. It's, it's like purple underneath and the leaves are starting to fan out. Like it's not that bad. It's going to survive, but it could have been a lot worse. Like it got like yellow and but I'm really drastic with mine. I bring them like in the cold frame greenhouse so that they get used to the cold. And so, cause I want to reproduce the seeds and I don't know, like I have this philosophy and this idea that if I get them used to the cold and like straight from the beginning, then at the end of the season, when it gets a little bit colder, they will be a little bit more, I guess, uh, how do you say that? Stronger and hardier. <laughs> and it's been working yeah. good for me for the past three years I've been doing that and I want to collect the seeds from these plants because I have some heirloom varieties and I feel like if I do that with these plants 
then the seeds from those plants that are stronger will just get stronger and stronger generation after generation. You know, that's my philosophy. And that's what I've been trying to do for the past, uh, for the past year for that. But last year I totally, I totally forgot to get the seeds and I just ate everything because I didn't have enough tomatoes. So this year I'm, I started a whole bunch more. So that's pretty much what I'm so glad you're that far in the process. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm at the experimentation Mm -hmm. process and I mean, we're here full time and you know, I, yeah, we're here full time. So we can afford, I guess, to take the risk and, and do it. So, and we have the place to do it too, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Have you done any tests, any uh, tests in the, in the past? Uh, the last three years have all been a test and <laughs> I've had a lot of uh, things go wrong, like transplanting too early, even with the hardening off. Um, it got down to like, I think 42. And I feel like my tomatoes last year were awful. They struggled. So I don't want to do that again. So I'm trying to be really careful this year. Uh, I saw that North Star Prep Stutter asked, um, she said, he or she said, I'm in West Central Minnesota. What's it like living on the coast of the Sound? Uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's really wonderful because we've, from the West, we've got lots of ocean air off the Bering Sea. And then to my left, uh, we've got the Unalakleet River. So it's really, really fresh air. The salt in the air, you can smell it, but it doesn't really affect the plants um, because it's just, so much heat in the summer and it's for such a long time so it's wonderful like i wouldn't i don't want to live anywhere else if i can help it uh just the smell of the air and how everything feels and it's very humid here it's really nice i think today it was like 76 percent humidity and i never noticed that until i went and lived in fairbanks where it's very dry like every time you move you get shocked um so I appreciated it while I was going to college in Fairbanks. So when I came back years and years later, it's like, oh, I love the ocean. Oh, I love the salt air. Oh, I love the humidity. Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate it a lot more now. So I can say it's wonderful living on the coast of the Norton Sound. Oh, that's cool. My brother, uh, Julian, he's in Alaska, actually. He's in Kenai. And he's in the chat right now, yeah. Julian. And he says... Uh, Alaska is so big that it really depends on the area for the growing season, you know? So, I mean, what are the differences yeah. of the zones when you go like from Fairbanks to your place to Kenai? What are the differences? Uh, Unalakleet is the zone three. Fairbanks is uh, very extreme. I One time it was 54 below Fahrenheit and everybody still went to work and I was on my way to work and my tires popped. Um, It was just too extreme and you have to keep your car plugged in (laughs) all the time. Uh, Kenai, I've said that before too, um, about like the Kenai, Anchorage, Homer area. It's in south central Alaska and it's much warmer. I think their zone is like a 6A or a 7A, something like that. Um, So when people tell me that they live like in Kenai or Homer and they're Alaskans, it's like, Yes, you are, but it's much colder (laughs) where I am, and it's much more extreme um, because it's very windy here. Yeah. But in Fairbanks, there's, like, no wind at all. There's just no wind. Really? And it's in a valley, and there's a lot of pollution there. Um, So I don't recommend Fairbanks. No insult to anybody (laughs) if they're (laughs) living in Fairbanks already, but I tried it for seven years, and I would never go back, except they have great food. They have really good food in the restaurants there. Yeah, I think but, they have puts in there. Yeah, it's a lot different. Yeah, it's a lot different. So really research Alaska because there's a difference between like, I think we get up to zone one and two in really northern Alaska. So I'm I'm grateful that I'm in zone three. Yeah. Because uh, I couldn't yeah. imagine worse than zone three. <laughs> I know. And, and I think there's actually a zone zero uh, if I'm... Correct. What? Yeah. Like in Nunavut in those areas, yeah. like up there, I think, I think there's on zero. Cause mm-hmm. I was talking to somebody on Facebook the other day on the gardening, um, 
page and they were like, yeah, I'm in zone zero. And I was like, what? Are you kidding me? And you're in Quebec? She's like, yeah. And so there's like zone zero, one, two, three, four, all the way to five, I think, here in Quebec. Uh And that's uh, that's like the variation because Quebec is so huge. It's so big. I don't know how big it is in, in size, but it must be similar to Alaska. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see my sister, Mimi. Mimi out of the bottle is here. Hi. Cuckoo. She's <laughs> she, she just started her own little channel. She does she does Reiki uh and energy uh like a, from a distance. She gave me a a, a treatment and uh it was pretty cool to receive. Wow. Yeah. Like yeah. I wasn't a believer. So cool. I wasn't like a believer like a couple <laughs> years ago, but like it completely changed my mind about it which is pretty cool yeah i'm glad that your family supports you and that they come to your live streams <laughs> that's really yeah. nice yeah well i mean yeah. you know we we yeah I, I really love my family my dad is like my number one supporter he show he shares out everything that i do and uh Aww. you know he's always been a really good supporter and uh, my brother yeah. Julian, he's in Alaska, and I just miss him so much. Uh, like we see, don't yeah. see each other enough. And uh, my brother actually story time. My dad had an old <laughs> Chevy pickup truck, a '57 Chevy, and my brother came all the way to Quebec because uh, I I paid him a, a ticket, and he mm-hmm. fixed it all up, and he drove back from Quebec all the way to Alaska with the old 57 pickup truck and my dad hopped in with him all the way to Vancouver <laughs> or to BC and they yeah. uh, they did the whole trail and it, it, he didn't break down too much which is pretty awesome it was an awesome truck that's awesome what a cool project and yeah. that they could travel together that way yeah that was my grandfather's truck that uh, was uh, given to my dad and now my brother has it in Alaska Aww. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. That sounds like a village story. <laughs> yeah. Just hey, like mine. people here are so helpful. Yeah, I'm and not I, used to the live chat at the same time. So I'm sorry if there's questions and I'm missing them. Not it's fine. I'm still like yeah. just getting used to this. This is the first time that I'm not like completely sweating underneath my arms like before a live stream. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So yeah, I, I need to go back in the comments too. But what I like about having two people on is that while you're talking, I can look through the chat and then like vice versa, you know? Yeah. So that's like a little <laughs> trick that I found. Uh, tag team. Yeah. No, it's funny because yeah. um, since you got me just an hour ago, I was transplanting rhubarb. I was really sweating. I looked <laughs> tired. Um, I think I slept like four or five hours last night because we've got baby those baby Australorp chicks right now. Uh, so my husband and I, between all of the work in the garden and everything, uh, we're basically tag teaming on the chicks. Yeah. And it's kind of like having a newborn baby. I have three children. Um, so it kind of brings me back to that. So this is what it was like. Now I remember why I stopped having children. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's, it's so much fun. Like my chickens, they have uh, tail feathers now. Awesome. It's so cute. And they're flying now. Um. Big Bill Ritchie, he's one of the roosters. It's really obvious he's a rooster. He's such a man, like a man <laughs> rooster. <laughs> but it's um, it's just fun watching them grow because I've never really even seen a chicken. You know, there's nobody around here really with chickens. And if they have them, it's just long enough to um, have them and then butcher them. Yeah. So, yeah, I haven't really. And it's not like they call and say, hey, want to come see my chickens? Like, Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So you have to have them flown over. Yeah, we had the baby chickens flown from Murray McMurray's and they got to Uncleet just fine. Um, we The free chick that they sent died, um, but it was not the same as the Australorp. It was a lot smaller of a chick. So I think the giant Australorp chicks, they kind of squished it on the way. But yeah. all of the other ones survived. We have 32 right now. So I think we have three or four roosters and the rest are hens. So it's great. Oh, good. That's a good, that's a good percentage yeah. right there. 
Yeah, I think so. <laughs> like I'm getting mine on the 1st of June and they told me that they're not going to be able to sex them because at the factory, I guess, where the hatchery, um, they're not going to be able to sex them because of everything, the social distancing and everything, because they have to be too close, I guess, to identify them. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to have them oh. just really mixed up. Yeah. Gee, I felt blessed that Marie McMurray's could even help me. I thought they'd be like, no, we don't ship to Northwest Alaska. That's ridiculous. But they got here in three days. Awesome. And they survive without food or water for three days in there, huh? Yeah, because I guess they eat something out of their egg that lets them survive for 72 hours just yeah. fine. Um, which I doubted until I saw what happened and that they were pretty much great. So, And they were totally like excited. Nobody was lethargic or anything. They were just ready to go. That's but cool. I don't know how much of that is also Australorp genetics because Australorps, they're so big and busty um, and they're meant to thrive and be really strong. So that might be why, which is the reason I picked them for what we want to have here in our coop. That's so cool. That's awesome. I, I never heard of those before I saw your video. So I was like, oh, cool. Like I'm new to chickens. <laughs> I, I I just literally called and yeah. I'm like, okay, I want two laying hands and I want 35 uh, bro broiler chicks so that I can like just grow them as fast as I can yeah. and get food in my in my fridge, you know? And uh, so yeah. they said, oh, well, the only ones that we have left are the white hens. So I'm like, well, you know, it's better than nothing, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it's better than nothing. Yeah, no, we're going to try to keep them alive during the winter, use them for the eggs and the meat. Um, so I really did a lot of research because I'm such an animal lover. I, I, I couldn't stand accidentally killing all those chickens. So I right. made sure that I knew yeah. the kind that would thrive in Alaska. Um, and of course, you know, in Alaska, of course, we have birds here. There's lots of big fat ravens, uh, oh. lots of eagles. Oh. Um, the, like the predator birds kinds of things. Yeah. And yeah, um, ptarmigan. We have ptarmigan here. We have the little snowbirds, uh, geese, crane, things like that. So yeah. I knew that chickens, if they were big enough and feathery enough, they could survive here. Cool. That's awesome. I have yeah. Blake here that ask, that's asking me, what's my favorite vegetable to eat? Um, I would say carrots. Carrots are my, like my most favorite vegetable to eat. And especially here with our cold climate, when you harvest them in like late fall, like in September, when it there's a little bit of frost on the ground, those are when they're the best oh, and they're the most succulent and sugary little carrots. Like my kids last year actually went out to the garden and was try we're trying to dig through the frozen ground to get the carrots to, to eat for breakfast last year. That's how much they love them. And they have a hard time eating carrots from the store in the wintertime. Yeah. <laughs> no, in my village, um, we get fresh produce, but it's not really fresh. You know, it's like, I don't want to say old. I mean, it's fine, but it's been in storage and you can taste that it's been in storage. Um, yeah. So the first time I tried, yeah. yeah, the first time I tried all that stuff, the way it's supposed to be where you grow it yourself. You know, it was such an eye opener and it gets you hooked. It's like, I don't care if I'm in zone three, I'm going to grow whatever I want because it tastes so much better. And plus here, like a watermelon is probably about $27, $28 um, wow. to get carrots. It's about $8 for like a two pound bag. Um, potatoes are about $10 for a bag, like a small bag of potatoes. So um it means the world to me to be able to grow my own food because it saves so much money, which is why I'm excited to have this extra lot that I was yeah. given a lease yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's crazy. That's so expensive. How much does beer cost? Um, we don't have a liquor store here. You don't is a damp community. And that means that a damp community, you can order your alcohol, you can have it flown in, but you can't have a liquor store in town. Um, so as a result of that, there is a lot of bootlegging that goes on. Um, we have a certain amount of alcohol we can all order. I think it's like 14 fifths of alcohol you can have a month. And then like, a hundred beers or something and like 24 bottles of wine so we just 
yeah, like I've got champagne in my pantry. I've got some beer in the pantry, some whiskey. Um, but other than that, yeah, you can't just run to the liquor store. Yeah. So I, I did live in the city for 16 years. So that was a little weird um, coming back and having to order alcohol. And since there's only 750 people here, <laughs> everybody knows who orders alcohol. Everybody know knows how much they ordered. <laughs> everybody knows who the bootleggers are. Yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, bootleggers and moonshine. That's wow. Awesome. Only three to four dollars for a watermelon. That's awesome. Who says like, that? Even in the city in Anchorage, it's like ten dollars for a watermelon. Who said um, that? Let me see. It was. Let me see. Oh, hi, Blake. Be ready. Blake. Okay. Hi, Brian. Be yeah. ready. Thanks for coming in. Thank you guys so much. And Howie, Food Forest, Pomaculture. He's got an awesome channel. Uh, and if you don't, like, he's so knowledgeable on, like, yeah. everything that's food forest and building soil and stuff. I watch a lot of his stuff. He's, I'm learning a lot from him. You mean Blake Hurst or? Uh, no, uh, Food Forest Permaculture. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was seeing that. I I, kept, I keep seeing that um, Food Forest Permaculture yeah. around. He's, um, he's he Blake Hurst said I would be sorry. Uh, Blake Hurst said I would be making my own wine, and I would make my own wine. I can make kombucha, but I'm not legally allowed to make my own wine. It's called the bootlegger's law. Oh, you can't really? make your own alcohol here either. Darn. <laughs> Good try, but people have thought of that, and it's a no. <laughs> oh no, darn. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. We, we make our own beer and we make our own wine when, when we can. We haven't made wine a, in a little while. The problem is, is that we make our wine, but we don't wait the full six months. Like it's all, we drink it all before it's ready. <laughs> and so it's like not that good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's hard not to try to sip a little bit when you make it yourself. You know, it's kind of like those carrots. You know, they're so good. And so you pick them kind of early, even though you know you shouldn't. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Blake says, yeah, she means me. <laughs> I'm learning a lot from you, yeah. Blake. <laughs> Blake and I, we have... Uh, Somebody's talking about fiddleheads. Yeah. Do you get fiddleheads there, Mallory? Yeah, we got fiddleheads, but they're not ready yet. They're not... Like, we still have snow out in the forest. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting yeah. and waiting. Ben's going out to take to walk the dog every day. And he's like, okay, no mushrooms. Yeah. No fiddleheads, no ramps, no nothing. There's just snow. <laughs> right now happened. in Unalcleet, we have, um, yeah, in Unalcleet, we have traditional foods that are ready, actually. Um, there's one, it's like a root, but it tastes like potatoes. It's called, in Inupak Eskimo, we call it masu. Um, so those are ready, those root potato things, whatever. I don't know the real name for them, I'm sorry. But yeah, they're called masu. And also other people are getting sura, which is willow leaves. Okay. Um, and it's only a certain kind of a willow. And I don't know the English name for it either, but sura. And what people do with sura, I actually have a video of this on my channel. Um, you take the, the leaves and because they're just little tiny leaves um, to make them last all winter, they pr we preserve them in oil. Okay. Um, people here okay. use seal oil to do that. Um, because of my religious beliefs, I don't eat anything without in the ocean without fins and scales. Okay. Um, so we preserve it in avocado oil or olive oil. Oh. And then that way you just eat it with your fish. You oh. let it thaw a little bit when you want to eat it. And then you just eat it like a bite of fish and then a bite of the oil and the greens. Um, so that's how we preserve certain stuff here. Cool. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. awesome. You go fishing a bit? Yes, we do go fishing when we can. I grew up in a with my grandpa and my mom in the same house and my sister. And we lived a very heavy subsistence lifestyle. Like my grandpa was always the first one to catch king salmon every year. Uh, we also get silver salmon, chum salmon, all kinds of salmon. We get white fish and trout. Um, we also get fish in the winter. Um, like tom cods. I don't know if you have tom cods there. I, you guys go ice fishing ever? 
I don't think, I, I don't know. I would have to check. I, I've never went ice fishing. I would really love to go. But like most of the ice fishing we have here is like trout and pike and um, mm -hmm. what else? Lake trout. Yeah. 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 We eat a lot of trout here. Um, but when I was growing up, everybody had their boat, you know, and since we were gone for 16 years in the city and we moved back, you know, all of our money did not go into a boat like as if you had as if we had stayed here um so right now we don't have a boat and a motor but my father-in-law kindly offered to let us use his extra fishing boat this summer so we're definitely gonna do that and i'm excited to use like the fish guts and the fish blood and put it in the garden like and make a fish emulsion yeah even. Um, awesome yeah and then the way we preserve fish is we dry it um we smoke it and we can it and jar it and all that stuff. So Pressure we cooking. eat it a lot of ways. Yeah. Yep. So it's awesome. I'm really looking forward to the fishing part of it. And it's yeah. great because it's free, you yeah. know, and it's right there. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. That's funny. People are talking about renewable energy and stuff. I was wondering, what are you guys uh, for like electric? What, who's supplying you guys in electricity out there? Like, how does it work? Is uh, it like water? Is it uh, hydro? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Or hydro. Um, for electric, there's the Unalcleet Valley Electric Company, and they do have a windmill farm because this is such a windy area. Okay. Uh, there's a, so there's like six or seven giant turbines on the, up the hill where people have started moving up there. Um, and that gives us like maybe a $80 credit every month against our bill. But in the winter, I pay between $800 and $600 a month for electric. Yeah. Um, so I'm really not going to be interested in heating my coop this winter unless it's very extremely cold and maybe then just use a heat trace. Um, and then, so that's our electric. So we definitely would like wind turbines on our own lot. And that's something I'd want to look into. Um, people here also started using solar power about four years ago. So like there's a church, there's the airports, a few people's houses that can afford that kind of thing, getting the solar power set up because we finally have a local supplier for the solar power set up. It's just a matter of being able to pay that person. Um, so there's options here, but it's really expensive. Um, my bill last month was about $470 for electric. Wow. So anything we can do not to use electricity, um, we do that. Yeah, definitely. Like we we heat with wood here all winter long and our electric mm -hmm. bill is probably like in the wintertime, $200 to $300 a month. And yeah, that's yeah. Because and that's the thing I want. Yeah, I want to, when I was wood. growing up, everybody had wood stoves. Um, and as westernization came more and more to my village, barely anybody has wood stoves. And that's crazy because there's so much wood here. There's so much driftwood that comes in from the ocean oh, yeah. that flows out from the river. So it doesn't make any sense that people got rid of their wood stoves. Um, when I was growing up, everybody had piles for their wood. Yeah. Um, and my mom didn't renovate her house. And when she did that, she took out the wood stove, which now I'm like, no, that makes you so rich, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely a wood stove is in the plan for us. Um, and I think it'll drastically bring down our electric bill. I really yeah. think it would. Well, I sure hope you get that yeah. in there. I have North Shore yeah. Preparedness saying, can you put out gill nets in Alaska for fishing? Yes. Yep. That's what everybody does here. Um, in Unalcleet, we don't seine for fish. A lot of people, I think in Kenai and maybe other villages, they go seining. Um, but we do use gill nets here. And I grew up with my grandpa mending nets, getting them ready, putting them out. Um, my husband is an artist and a musician, and he's done paintings of me telling my memories of my grandpa constantly oh. bringing me with his a boat to go across the river to our camp across the river using his gill net and just checking the fish like a, every couple of hours. Cause that's like gold in the water. Yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely use a lot of gill nets here. Awesome. Uh, I have large, I'm, I'm, wait, I may be skipping a few comments, but uh, Laj DIY says, 
Can you ask her how they deal with the long, dark winters and what the, do they do to pass time? <laughs> uh, we're used to it. We're really used to the long, dark winters. Um, and after you spend the whole summer with so much sunlight, like it, it usually gets to like maybe 20 hours a day of sunlight. Um, we, I and many other people, we welcome the darkness um, because we're used to it. We grew up with it and it doesn't bother most people, but there's definitely people that get seasonal affective disorder, you know, sad disorder. Yeah. Um, Cabin where theater. they have to deal yeah. with it. Yeah. And we do have like community activities here. Like the school is always having basketball games, volleyball games. I think what people do is they really get invested in what their children are doing at school. Um, and the school is more like the community coming together time. Um, and then other people from villages, they have tournaments here. They come here for the tournaments. Um, my husband once in a while will have like concerts because he's a musician. He'll put on a concert. Oh. Um, they have, we have a community center, so they're very aware of like having activities here. But as far as other villages, they're kind of just out of luck. Um, Shaktulik is a village about 40 miles away up the coast from where we are. And my brother lives, my half brother lives there. And they definitely have a harder time. And there's more crime, more drinking. Um, there's definitely a lot of drinking here yeah. more often in the winter than in the summer yeah uh, which creates problems when it's like 40 below outside and you're there's drunks outside you know like it's kind of crazy <laughs> yeah. so um it's definitely not for people that don't have the mindset that the darkness is a good thing yeah definitely yeah johnny harper yeah. he says i don't get depressed much either he's in hawaii come on hawaii <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, I have uh, also here, David says, 20 hours of light. Oh, my God, I would burn out. <laughs> yeah, you get tired of it, especially when you just went to bed and the sun is up at five o'clock in the morning. So yeah. definitely in the like I have blackout curtains in all of the rooms except for the living room. And sometimes I wish I had blackout curtains in the living room, especially this morning, because it was accidentally shining right on my chicks. It's like, uh -oh. no, poor baby. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, blackout curtains are really helpful for when you want to get sleep in Alaska. Yeah. See, I lived out there one full year, and I was 17 going on 18. I, I spent my 18th birthday out there, and I was with my brother Julian, and we'd go fishing, and we, like, literally would go on the Kenai River. I think it was the Kenai River, Russian River, and we would go fishing at night like at 10 o'clock at night, yeah. go fish three fish, our quota for the day. And then like fillet one out there, <laughs> eat it. And then literally the next yeah. day after midnight, we go catch some more, you know, cause it's another day. Yeah. And so that was awesome. And then the winter, the winter, I didn't think it was that bad because I had so many really good friends. I had like uh, these cool friends, Jeremy and, and Josh, two brothers that I was always hanging out with. And we would go, what, yeah. we would party a lot for sure, you know, like, of course, yeah. like you said, there's a lot more drinking, <laughs> you know, but like the community yeah. was just like so tight and like everybody talks to each yeah. other. Everybody's so welcoming, like, okay, we'll party at Jeremy's place. Let's go. Let's go over there. Party at so-and-so's place. Everybody just like hops over there and you don't even know the person. You need to just hop over there, you know? Yeah. So no, that's, that's how, definitely village life here when you're yeah. that age for sure. Yeah. So that's how I yeah. was dealing with it. I had such an amazing year. It was so awesome. Yeah, I'm sure you did. It's There's nothing like being in a place where it's different and it makes you happy and other people are feeling good about it too. So yeah. I'm glad you spent time in Alaska. There's so many people who haven't spent time in Alaska. I know. You guys are missing out big time. I have a Sean in Alaska yeah. actually in the chat right now. He's a... Uh, also near, I think he's, oh man, I forgot. Where Where are you again? Are you in Nikiski somewhere he in that area? Yep. Oh, okay. Sean in Alaska. Hi, Sean in Alaska. I'm glad you're in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what else is going on in the chat here? 
How's the new lot coming, Sean? All right, so I'm not up to date with Sean's channel. I'll have to go get up to date there. He's in Soldatna, he says. So yeah, he's like mm -hmm. where my brother is. That's so cool. So I mean, Sean, we were we were talking about hardening off plants earlier, and then we just like went like we finished with that subject, and we're just trying to get to know Annette more and ask her a whole bunch of questions about Alaska. So that's where we are now. But if you want to know a little bit more about the hardening off of the plants and how we do it, then you can go back and watch back what we were, uh, what we presented. And if you guys have any questions, put them in caps. That would be highly appreciated because it's so much easier for us to see oh. them. And uh, that's like, a good idea. Yeah. Like this video. Yeah. That's funny um, about Sean in Alaska being in Soldatna because um in the long term we're not sure we want to necessarily stay in Unalakleet even though our family's here uh even though we love it here and there's no place like home you know yeah. as far as long term goes i i'm not sure that i can stay in zone three and be happy to only garden three months out of the year yeah um my heart i realize now that i need to do more than that and we can't bring we can bring cows here and we can bring sheep here, but there's nobody that can shear them. There's nobody that can take care of their hooves. Um, there's nobody that can help me if they get sick, yeah. you know, and I got to stick my arm up something and I don't know what I'm doing and I might kill something. Yeah. Um, so to be yeah. a responsible animal steward, I'm not sure that it would be wise to bring sheep here or cows here, but I know that I can do it in Kenai. I know I can do it in Saldatna. And actually, I, I was adopted and my biological mom, she lives in Kenai and she's invited us several times if we ever wanted to move there to stay with her so we would have time to go look for our own land um, and not have to do it remotely all the way from Unalakleet, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, as I want to spend my life gardening and taking care of animals and the best I can do here is chickens <laughs> yeah. and I'm not sure that's enough for me. So Sean in Alaska, I might have to hit you up someday and meet you and learn how to live there. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I didn't know about that for your, that you were adopted. Yeah. Um, I was adopted between sisters. So okay. it was really close. It was an open adoption uh, my mom, she died four years ago, and she left me this house, and um, that's why I'm here, is I came to be with my mom and take care of her before she died. So, and as much as I love the romance of being in the home I grew up in, and being in my mom's house, and having everything remind me of her, it's yeah. been, you know, four years now. Okay. And so I'm kind of in a mental place where it's like, as much as I love my mom and as much as I love my village, this realistically, as if you want to, if I want to feed my family and I want to take care of them with like raw milk and healthy food that I grew myself, I don't think it's necessarily realistic to stay yeah. here unless I had like a ton of money. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You have a challenging place. you like, really because you have to get yeah. everything shipped and I, I couldn't even imagine like having a cow yeah. shipped over there you know it's like yeah but... it'd have to be a baby cow <laughs> yeah definitely yeah no like for example um cattle panels right yeah. you see all those videos where you can have a trellis an arch trellis in your garden for 30 bucks and you put up a cattle panel well I called Kenai mill and feed or something someplace in Kenai really nice place and they got me a quote for shipping 10 of those cattle panels right $300 in cattle panels the total was I think it was $2,200 with the freight just to ship me 10 cattle panels so that's what I I guess that is another part of it financially yeah. is how much would it cost to ship in the cows? How much, how about cattle panels and fencing? And how we do have feed? fencing here, but that's, yeah. How about the Yeah, feed? exactly. Getting the hay. And, and the everything. chickens. Yeah, the chickens. Um, I We had shipped in about 100 pounds of feed just for the baby, for the baby chickens. But what we're going to do this summer is harvest wild rye and bluegrass and other things because there's so much to forage around here Yeah. Um, that we're going to try to feed them all summer that way. And I don't know 
if people know this, but you can cure cure different greens and stuff um, and grasses and the rye and you can cure it and like turn it over and then keep it for the whole winter to feed them. But then there's the challenge of, well, where do I put it once I cure it and how much do I need for chickens for the whole entire winter, Curing which means I'll like probably fermenting? end up. Yeah, see, like there's the fermenting, there's options. Okay. Um, it's just, you know, it, like that's a lot of work on yeah. top of the garden on top of getting fish and blueberries and salmon berries, things yeah. like that. Yeah, I get you. Yeah. I see there's some new people in the chat. There's Southern Bless Homestead. Hello. Thank you for coming in. Uh, Nate came back. Nicole came back. Um, but unless Nicole was always there, but I heard, I, I saw like, hello, everybody. So I wasn't too sure if she had left and came back. Um, the Overworked Gardener. Hey, thanks for stopping by. And uh, yeah. A whole bunch of people that are coming back week after week. It's only been like my third week that I've been doing live streams. So, <laughs> but I'm really happy to see you guys and I'm happy you guys get to meet. It's such a Anna. good idea. Yeah. I mean, it's such a good idea that you started doing this. Yeah. Well, it really helps on the watch time because, like, I, oh my gosh, Kevo, mm -hmm. she, okay. She has been with me like for a little while uh, and she like comments on every one of my videos. Uh, I think it's Caroline, her name. She sent me an email. I asked her to send me an email and I completely, I'm blanking out your name. Is it Caroline Cabo? The one that she's got like X and O's on her, on her profile picture. I'm really happy she was in Quebec and she's like gets nostalgic and she writes me like when uh, she, she, Kathleen, there you go, Kathleen. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> she uh, She's out west in Canada, and she is from Quebec. And so that's pretty cool that she's here. I'm really excited. You know, it's, it's cool to see, like, the people that have been following me for a little while and, like, the supporters of my channel, like, show up in my live mm -hmm. streams. I think that's so awesome. And, yeah, so what I was saying is that the watch time – uh, for these live streams have really been helping me out because and like I'm really trying to be consistent with YouTube so I got like one video on Tuesday then I got my live stream on Wednesday and then I have my English video on Saturday so I, hopefully okay I'm going to say this in, on the mic so that the YouTube um, bot caps it please like me and share me out YouTube <laughs> come on I'm working really hard I'm busting my ass off all right. Sorry uh, for that. I actually didn't know that the consistency of YouTube videos actually was part of the factor. So when yep. you said that, I was like, oh, of course, that makes sense. So I'm so glad that you even mentioned that. There's a yeah. lot of things you mentioned that I'm like, that is not something I knew. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's so much to learn on like I've been on YouTube for a little bit over a year and there is so much to learn, yeah. like how to like you know, work with all the social medias and then how to make your proper thumbnails and like the consistency of the videos, the algorithm, the algorithm, the uh, tags on the videos, the description and all those things that like I didn't know. And like I've been searching yeah. like days in and out on YouTube searching for like, OK, how to, you know, uh, write a proper description, how to uh work with the algorithm how does the seo work and so yeah i mean like if you have any questions like just shout out and i'll i'll be more than happy to help you because i i really i really love your channel i really love like just your energy and everything and i, I had to have you on here so and especially you're in zone three so i mean hello yeah hello <laughs> no i'm so glad you found me it's um it's been really eye-opening to know that I'm not alone in what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And I think that's so important, you know, not to feel alone when you've been alone all winter. Because um, cause I've, I've spent the whole entire six months of winter, you know, teaching myself stuff, learning as much as I could, watching this, watching that. And I was telling you earlier, um, previously before, I couldn't watch as much YouTube because yeah. it was about $600 a month. 
Um, so we finally broke down and just paid for a satellite dish and we now pay about $160 a month and it's unlimited. Um, so that feels that made it so my learning is now unlimited and I no yeah. longer have excuses um, not to learn as much as I want. So yeah. it was wonderful in the winter, learning, learning, learning. And now growing season is here for zone three. And it's like, oh, I'm so ready. It's so exciting. I can't believe I'm ready. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm so glad you have me on here. It's you're wonderful. And I'm so grateful. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And like speaking of learning, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I posted a video out last year in uh, I think it was in January for uh, an application to win a scholarship. I don't know if you guys know Jean-Martin Fortier. He's the market gardener and he wrote the book. And uh, here, wait. Try not to show my belly. Okay. So the market gardener, it's, it's in French here, but he has it in English too. And uh, what he shows is how to maximize your your garden space and like to intensify your spacings for your crops and everything and how to yeah. generate he he generates like a hundred thousand dollars of revenue on one acre of uh of land which is awesome yeah and so i posted a video out to win this scholarship last year for the market gardeners master class and i won and i was so oh, excited about that i didn't know that yeah, so I have all this information and all this schooling like accessible for life, and it's literally like to like I, I one click away. And every time he upgrades the the course and he gets a new video out, mm -hmm. then he'll post it on there, and I have access for life. So I'm just like really that excited is so about cool. that. Yeah, this, that was worth it. That's a good job. Good job. Yeah, I was so excited. It was <laughs> around here. We year. will say. Um, it was my second year. Yeah. It's so cool school. to hear you speak French. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess. yeah. No, I yeah. grew up on um, Anne of Green Gables. I love Anne of Green Gables. Um, and it not it like, isn't Nova Scotia close to you? Like right there? Yeah, it's right. Yeah, it's not too far away. It's like on the um, eastern, more eastern side. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have New Brunswick and then Nova Scotia. Yeah, no, I always thought it was fascinating how people in Canada could speak the French and everything. Um, in Inupak Eskimo, the way you say so champ, um, you say yoy. So it was hard for me just now not to look at you and be like, yoy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so cool. Because it means around here, that means what a champ you are. You know, Aww. like it's sincerely very cool, very nice. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, millennial homesteaders. Hey, Phil. What's going on? Your dad is not too racked up. <laughs> hey, if um, I was just wondering if maybe Millennial Homesteader might want to pop up if his dad is not too uh, extreme. If you want to pop up here for a few minutes, like I'm, I'm probably not going to do do a two hour live. I'm just going to probably like get another like fifteen minutes. But if you want to pop up here, um, you're more than welcome. Just so let me know in the chat. Because uh, he's another homesteader in uh, British Columbia that I really enjoy watching. And I know that he's been working off, working his butt off like me. And um, yeah, so if you want to hop up, just you're more than welcome to come up here with us. Um, I'm on Wi-Fi, but Hannah's sick, so won't be able to. Okay, so he's not able to, but that's fine. Um, I saw North Shore preparedness. He's like, Mallory, tell YouTube that you love him that you love YouTube. So I'm going to tell the bot, <laughs> YouTube, I love you. I love you, YouTube. Love me. Good job. <laughs> North Star Preparedness is also talking about the square foot gardening. And I get confused between like the square foot gardening, the French intensive agriculture, and then whatever you were just talking about, because it all sounds like kind of the same thing, the market it, garden idea, it where does. it's all very close together and you, um, success, it's succession sowing. Is that right? It, yes. Where when something's garden. done growing, you plant something else. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. And yeah, like, I know it. Yeah. It works like if you're planting out, let's say broccoli, that's like a heavy feeder. You have, you plant your bed of mm -hmm. broccoli, but I think like, uh, like the way that Jean Martin is, 
explaining is biointensive. I think that's his term of it. So I, yeah, it's probably the same thing. Mm-hmm. Except he has them on thirty inch rows, like uh, like yeah. thirty inch by a hundred feet rows. That um, yeah. and so that's how he does it. I have thirty inch beds by fifty feet, and um, so succession that's planting cool. is like okay. If I get done with broccoli, which is a cold season crop, and then I yeah. can plant in something that doesn't need compost because I had just literally laid it down for the broccoli. So I'll get yeah. like lettuce in there or carrots or something like that. Something that doesn't need as much fertility. So that's the succession yeah. planting that like he explains and like everything. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so interesting. interesting. I never heard about that until like three years ago. Every time I hear you speak French, um, my favorite book is The Little Prince. And the way I say it, because, you know, there's nobody here to tell me how to say the um, the author's name is Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. How do you say it? What's the right way to say that? Hey, wait. Do you know uh, The Little Prince? The Little Prince? Yeah. I'm gonna... yeah. But the know. way that I just say it is Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. But I've heard other people say it, but I don't know how a French Canadian okay. person okay. would say Antoine it. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. Perry. Antoine de Saint Exupéry. That's, <laughs> That's so I hard. Think. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> oh my gosh. But it's beautiful to hear. Wow, I love hearing it. It's great. <laughs> Johnny Harper says she's got all that lumber. She could do raised beds. Well, you're gonna see in one of my upcoming vlogs that I'm that I'm gonna be posting out pretty soon. Not this week, but next week, what I've been doing in my gardens. It's sort of it's raised beds but not with lumber mm-hmm. i'll just leave that as a cliffhanger <laughs> <laughs> yeah you saw the picture because i sent you in, on instagram because i was so excited when i was doing it and everybody that's in the chat mm-hmm. that was in uh mark's live stream saw a little bit mm-hmm. of what i've been doing because i i showed a little sneak peek yeah you did so much work that's awesome that is really cool. Yeah, I wish I we didn't could have, have the heavy equipment. Yeah, yeah, well, I didn't have the kids for a full weekend. Ben's like, well, you should relax. Like, take this time off, you know? I'm like, no, I'm going to go to work. <laughs> like, what? I've been holding back yeah. for so long with the kids that I'm going to get to work. <laughs> like, <laughs> Exactly. No, I love this work. This is this homesteading and gardening. This is the most honest work I've ever done in my life. I spent yeah. 16 years in front of a desk at a computer. And working in the dirt, using a shovel, using a garden fork, sowing seeds, watering everything, um, building raised beds out of pallets and fences and everything. Yeah. This is the best work I've ever yeah. done in my life. And it makes me feel closer to God than I've ever felt because in the Bible, you know, they have harvests, they have first fruits, they have flocks. Mm-hmm. We're meant to take care of ourselves. Um, and I just this gardening it's just the most wonderful thing i feel like i've ever done in my life other than have my children yeah so i'm so glad that you do this yeah i totally feel you yeah gardening has always been a part of my life i grew up on a homestead with my dad and like they would make me weed and i i'd like really take it for granted you know and it's just yeah. like in my adult life when i started actually buying my groceries and stuff and like getting my, yeah. my hands dirty in the ground and just like being grounded to that point. And like, it's my meditation. It's my therapy. And like so much yeah. that I haven't been riding my horses, which was my passion for the longest time Aww. because I'd rather go garden. Like I, yeah. I feel bad for my horses, but I mean, they're, they're good. They're, they're, they're fat and happy, but I mean, like, <laughs> like I, yeah. I love gardening that much. Like that, my horses, I I hardly go ride them anymore. That's funny you say that because whenever my children ask me, mom, because you know when they want to draw me a picture or something, mom, what's your favorite animal? It's like a Clydesdale horse. Um, The reason, and not just Clydesdales, but you know, horses in general, because with my biological mom, she used to live in Seward and my mom would send me to go visit her, you know, every other year for a couple of weeks and a um, lot of people in Seward, Alaska, they have horses and pastures and everything. Mm-hmm. And my cousin had a girlfriend and I would um, get to ride her horses bareback. 
So I totally love horses. If I ever move to the Kenai Soldatna area, I'm definitely getting horses because it's, I can't imagine, I don't know about preferring to garden instead of ride a horse, but maybe it's because to me, like the horse thing is such a novelty, Yeah, you know, but I could yeah. totally see you know, if you're used to it. Yeah. I'd rather garden. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like I have my horses here and Copper, he's been in my family since he's been since he was three years old. And like I've had him for a yeah. little while. And, you know, I take care of them and I take care of their fencing when it breaks. And it's a lot of work. Yeah. Like and I feel like that's what I do most of the time is like I feed them, give them water, I give them grain and then. I fix mm -hmm. everything that's broke and then I have to like take care of the tack. I have to, you know, oil it down so that the leather yeah. doesn't break. And then it's just like a never ending process. And then, Oh, you have to clean up and scoop up the poop in the, in the, yeah. in the paddock. And then, you know, so it's just a lot. And so like having yeah. that home, it, that, that's like, I feel, I feel like I had more fun having horses when I was boarding them than literally having them at home. But then there's the other side that I love going to see them every day and petting them and then getting that therapy. But and just that yeah. makes me happy. You know, just like going yeah. to get the, the, those cuddles because Copper is, he's such like a cuddly horse and he'll literally like just like bend his head like two times around just to hug me, you know? And so that's what I love about Aww. it. And so it's not necessarily yeah. riding. And like they're old. I mean, well, Copper is still like in really good shape, but I mean, the other ones are still old. He's really old. He's like 20 years old and he's got arthritis yeah. and, you know, you got to be careful with him. And so, and it's just, yeah. I just love having them. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I have uh, somebody was asking any tips on what to grow in South Florida, hot and humid. I think uh, Johnny Harper would be able to help you with that because he's, he's pretty good at growing in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I think he is. I think he was saying that he was an, a botanist and he grows a lot of stuff, but I'd have to. Uh, Malabar spinach. Malabar spinach is really good and it's a perennial yeah. and it thrives here in zone three. So I do have um, Malabar spinach seeds that I'm going to sow, but for a hot area, Malabar spinach is a good perennial and they c totally thrive in the heat. So I would recommend at least that. <laughs> Yeah, and I know like there's there are a whole bunch like Jean Martin in my course he shows a whole bunch of salads that tolerate like hybrids and stuff that tolerate the heat and they don't bolt to seed right away. So I mean like mm -hmm. butter crunch uh, that I have lettuce that I always grow because it's really good. Um, those ones tolerate yeah. the heat pretty good. They don't bolt right away. I grew them through the whole summer, and um, I sold them all summer. So. I think that would be a good one. Like just look into the high hybrid varieties that tolerate the mm -hmm. heat because if you look red in the leaf lettuce stuff, also is good. Hmm? Uh, red leaf lettuce is also good. I've in my garden last year, I had the butter crunch. I had red leaf lettuce and I know my bok choy definitely bolted because we had record heat here last summer. It was yeah. very hot. Um, for us, it was like 88 degrees. But in the raised beds, I have uh, my heat sensors. And it was like 94, 96 degrees in the raised beds um, okay. because I build wind protection into the raised beds. Yeah. But yeah, definitely yeah. lettuces. Some of them can definitely stand the heat. Yeah. If you look in the heirloom varieties, sometimes they're a little bit more finicky with the heat. But um, yeah, definitely look in the hybrids. Like even broccoli. Mm -hmm. um, I had a broccoli last year that really tolerated the really big heat that I had and it didn't bolt the seed. Um, yeah, all like I, I definitely recommend hybrids for short seasons and for like challenging uh, climates because I mean, I mean, it's all good to like have heirloom and stuff, but I mean, if you're not looking into collecting the seeds, then I mean, there's nothing wrong with hybrids, mm -hmm. you know, you got to um, deal with what North you got. North Star Preparedness, the creeping onions there, I have those Egyptian walking onions, I yeah. think is what you're talking about, where the bulb grows at the top of the, of the onion, and yeah. then it falls over and plants another onion. Um, but yeah, those thrive in the heat. I learned that from Self Sufficient Me, that channel. He's got okay. Egyptian walking onions. I got some of those too. Actually, the lady that I bought from left them in a huge pot 
and I just didn't touch them, and they've just been thriving there with nothing. They do. They will not die. They yeah, die. no. <laughs> they need their own bed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I can't wait to try. They're on my windowsill right now. And I've got a bed ready to put those in so that every year I just, my, my goal is to have those perennials for sure. Oh man, I love it. Nicole. Thank you guys for showing up and for being so supportive. You guys are awesome. This um, community of the Wood Squad and Johnny, Nicole and Sean in Alaska. I'm so happy you're here. North Shore Preparedness. He's always there too. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys. She taught me how to graft a young age. She's a plant freak. Oh, I missed, I miss it. My mom is Vietnamese. Oh yeah. Cool. I didn't know that, Johnny. I love getting to know you guys. It's pretty cool. But yeah, I've, we've, we've been on for an hour and 10 minutes. And so. We guys, have? Yeah. Oh, wow. We have. <laughs> it, it goes by fast, doesn't it? I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was like hesitating. I was like, do I get more wine or do, do I crack, crack open a beer? <laughs> but I mean, I need to get some sleep too. I'm going to have a beer. Yeah. That sounds I, like a good yeah. idea. Well, man, if you want to have a beer with me, I'll have a beer with you and I'll do it live or we could do it not live. I would have a beer with you for sure. But um, yeah, on, for like, sure. I, don't, I don't know if people would want to hang out with us and have a beer. <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. My my village accent might come out a little bit too thick at that point. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I, I can take Thank a beer. Thank you pretty all fast. so much. Yeah. I could tank a beer pretty fast. I mean, I could I could stay on. Johnny says me too, yeah. beer. I already got one. Already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I better go. I'm actually wanting to um go finish my planting with the rhubarb bed and everything. All right. Um, I hadn't realized it was this long already. It's been so fun talking to all of you and seeing all the support that Mallory has. And I just, I had no idea a live stream could be this fun. Yeah. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I'm really getting to like yeah, this. It is. And I love having people with me and it's just like so much more um, like interactive, you know, like having somebody with me because when I'm when I'm by myself, I like read through the chat and I'm like, okay, let's let, let's read what everybody's saying and then yeah. answer. And so like having two people on here and actually having like somebody as interesting as you really, really helps. <laughs> so I'm I don't feel interesting because um anybody else in this village would say a lot of the same things as I would. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so it's interesting to me that you think it's interesting or that anybody actually thinks it's interesting yeah i totally think you're interesting in it thank you all right so guys are asking like okay so you're staying or going well i'm still here and yeah. there's still 19 i'm gonna people. go there's still 19 people in here yeah, yeah. and I, well so i'm gonna stay here i'm gonna see what's going on see if maybe somebody wants to hop on as well maybe yeah. probably we'll see okay. we'll see but i will definitely thank you all so much yeah, good night. Check Annette. me out, Eskimo in Alaska. Yeah, go check her out. Go grab her. She's awesome. Yeah, right. God bless you all and have a good day. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Wasn't she cool? Yeah, like I totally had to have her on here. She's really interesting. Papa Jean, he says, very interesting. So what are you guys up for? Like, are you guys still here? Like 21 people in the chat still. And I've been on here for an hour and 12. I mean, if you guys want, I can stay on and have a beer with you guys, I guess. <laughs> and I can, Johnny, I'd be really interested to meet you. Like, if you want to hop on one day, I'd be really interested to know you. Like, you seem like you have a whole bunch of cool, like, skills and you're always there and you watch our live streams on the replay and you comment all the time i mean <laughs> grace says we're a bad influence mallory all right pause i'm gonna go get a beer johnny says he's in okay i'm gonna send you a link
Now go get a beer. Johnny says I'm an enabler now. There you go. Influencers. And then you call me the influencer. All right, so I'm just waiting for him to hop on. Thank you, Papa, for coming in. Thank you for supporting me. You're awesome. I love you, Dad. I don't know if my brother's still in here. Julian, you still in here? <laughs> Wasif Asif Arts. Hello. Nice to meet you. I don't think I know you. I'm going to go check you out right now while I'm waiting for Johnny. Wasif Asif. Hard one. Arts. Oh, cool. You're far away from home. Nice to meet you. All right, so I'm so glad I got I got Annette here. I'm really happy. Alaska is awesome. You guys really have to go visit over there. Grace says, you're so bad, Johnny. Any day now, Johnny. SD Mountain Man, hi. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, I, we're late. It's, this is a late night stream. I'm a late night person. Johnny, you don't want you don't want to hop on? Come on. For real? I opened a beer for you. Mallory, say what time it is in the video. Um, it is uh, 11, 18 p.m. Julian's probably going to say, that's not late. Julian says, say what time it is in the video. What time is it in the video? You don't know how? Okay, well, look, I'm going to send you the link in here. Okay, wait. You just click on the link and then you hop on with your phone or with your laptop, whatever, and then you enter your name and you enter the broadcast and, and then I'll join you in. Really cool to meet you. <laughs> Mallory just made it funny. Um, Wasif, I am from Quebec. I am uh, on the east coast of Canada, and it's a French-speaking province. And uh, I'm, uh, if you're new here, I am a gardening slash homesteading channel. I uh, do a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of work. I, I just work my butt off, I guess, on my channel. <laughs> Nicole says, "Click the link." Hey, Jason McDaniel, what's going on? Hey, I totally like was live during uh, Trail Trash Adventures live stream. Or no, was it premiere? I'll have to go watch that. I think it's uh, what Mav's been up to quarantine nature walk. Here, wait, I'm going to. I'm going to play it right now. While I'm waiting for Johnny. You guys are 19 people watching me just like do nothing. <laughs> you guys are cool. Mongoose, I make video in both French and English. Really? Mongoose, I'm going to have to go check you out. 
Mongoose 410. That's so cool. I don't know many bilingual channels. And I like to know how people work and function because this is new to me. Very, very new to me. Um, so Mongoose 4. You, you're going to have to go comment on one of my videos. And so I can find you. Because I'm tap I'm writing it in here and I can't find you. So go comment one of my videos. I'll be able to click on your link and go check you out from there. You can make funny faces, Mallory. Oh my gosh, you do not want to see my funny faces. <laughs> Hi, High Country Fly Life, all the way from, I think you're from New Zealand, right? What's going on? So good to jump on your live. Yeah, thank you for stopping by. You missed uh, Eskimo in Alaska. She was on here. We were talking about hardening off our plants and uh, everything that you needed to know. I guess like if you buy the plants from the nursery, what to do to bring them outside. And um, yeah, from New Zealand. There you go. And so I had Annette from Eskimo in Alaska, which is an she's like a brand new channel, but I really love her energy and her personality. And so I had to have her on. I asked her like really spontaneously, hey, do you want to hop on like an hour before I went live? And she's like, yeah, sure. Let's try it. So yeah, she was really great, right? Yeah, so we asked her a whole bunch of questions about Alaska and fishing and how like life is up there because she has to have everything flown out, which is like she's really in a secluded area, um, non-accessible. What's up, Johnny? Where are you? So I asked Johnny to hop up. He's like um, a, another YouTube friend subscriber that always watches the videos and comments. And so I invited him up here. So I'm just waiting for him. Julian says, the video is four minutes late for me. <laughs> My brother's in Alaska. Maybe it's your internet service. What have you been planting right now? Well, today I actually was getting ready to go plant some beets to transplant them um, because I, I seed start them. It's better for like the foliage actually out here. There's like less, um, I don't know, like they, they get weird when I plant them directly in the ground and I like, I like to eat the, the leaves. So if I transplant them, it's a lot better. Mallory, the live that you did about wild edibles was fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, that was a really good one. I really love that. Um, it's just a lot of work. Um, I'm just doing like these Wednesday lives, uh, fun time chats, having some people on here with me because I need my watch time. Like I, I'm able to sustain it once I get it. It's just that to get that initial 4,000 watch hours is really hard. It's a lot of work. So I'm trying to be like more consistent and get those well, you know, I already told you that. So yeah, I'm definitely looking into like, if you guys have really good ideas of live streams that um, you'd be interested in seeing, I will be more than welcome to organize them. Just I need to organize them. That's the thing. Like I can't just do like a spontaneous live, say, hey, I'm going to have, I don't know, like three guests on and talk about this thing, you know? But they were really awesome. Mark and uh, Dave from Wildersted and Rolling Homestead and Wild Edibles are like really cool people and they have really awesome channels. So, I mean, the energy and amb uh, ambience, ambience was really awesome. I think Johnny's not going to hop on. takes a while to get the watch hours required. I'm almost there, which I'm happy about. And I have never been live. Oh, high life, high country, fly life. I'm having a hard time pronouncing your channel name. I bet. I mean, I've been, I've been trying to watch your videos as much as possible when they come out. And, uh, so I met him through Rocco from passion and hunting outdoors. He's, he's like a really big networker in the outdoors community and uh, so I met a whole bunch of cool people in the outdoors and fishing through him. And high, high country fly life is one of them. 
So I saw a video where you can plant and regrow from the stores. So I planted some onions that I got from the store. Let's see how that turns out and we shall see. Oh, that's so cool. Um, yeah, Cliff, here, come up, come up here. Your phone won't let you. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it works better with uh, Google Chrome if you try that. Um, Nicole, yeah, there, there are a whole bunch of things like celery, onions, green onions that you can try that way from the store bot. Um, but I think like if you plant an onion, you can only eat the greens out of it, which, which is pretty good. But I mean, I do too, Nicole. Yeah. And, uh, what else can you plant from the store bot? I think there's, um, actually pineapple. Yeah. Pineapple you can. Just call me high country for short. Yeah. All right, high country. Um, actually, your name is Tristan. Tristan. Because I love that name. How can we achieve target 4,000 hours of watch time as a new YouTuber? Wasif, I would say just try to concentrate on making every video every video better than your last one. Ooh, I have some crooked. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So I'm just answering was if here. Yeah, like just try to make really good content. Like I, I think that's like what I would, like, I'm not issues. even there yet. So, I mean, I, I don't even know if I can really, like I can sustain it now, but I've just really been trying to concentrate on making really good content. So that's the only thing I've been doing. How you doing, Cliff? Doing all right. Yeah. Oh, there really is a good lag between StreamYard and YouTube right now. About almost a minute. Yeah, I have my YouTube chat on, and I just switched it on my screen, so I see them a lot better live. Jason McDaniel, I just bought a book from a thrift store about regrowing from store about food. Oh, what is the name? What's the name of the book? I'd be interested to know. Oh, Bunny. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for stopping. Stopping stopping in. Oh my gosh. I'm I'm getting mixed up. Like I, I scrolled through my 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 chat here and I'm all mixed up. Hello, Wasif. Uh, Kathleen. There you go. Bye, Kathleen. Thank you so much for stopping in. Well, a partner. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. So I'm just going to finish my beer and then we're going to call it a night. But um, it's good to see you, Cliff. Did you go see uh, uh, Trav and Mav's uh, video? Yeah, I once saw it earlier. Yeah. Uh, Jillian says Mav like, is weird, but he's, he's a cool weird. weird. <laughs> I'm just getting to yeah, know them weird. a little bit but more. It's a good weird. Yeah, of course. Hey, North Shore. I got uh, Go issues on my side, it seems, with my uh, connection. Okay. It's laggy. Jason McDaniel says, book is called Don't Throw It Away, Plant It, and Other Indoor Growing Fun by Countryside Books. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool. There you go. Simon Forget, you're still in here. He's from Quebec too. I just met him on a live on Rain Dance, uh, Jesse's channel last night. He hopped on. We were talking about like working hard and like all the all the hard work we've been putting in on on either like the YouTube side or construction or homesteading. Oh, I think Cliff is bugged a little bit. No, I just have a tendency not to <laughs> there you go might have a little bit of lag <laughs> north shore preparedness take the seeds from peppers tomatoes melons and plant them can also regrow green onions yep definitely except for like regular onions just cut the bottom off 
Yeah, you can. And also, if you take the seeds from your peppers, your store bought peppers, you might not get the same peppers that like you were eating because they're hybrids. So you can like plant them out there and get a completely different pepper. Yeah, true. Very true. Well, you can even hybridize the ones you do grow if you uh, st uh, st uh, stem fuse them the right way. I'm trying to say there's a, there's a weird way. Yeah. But uh, if you get two different varieties of peppers, what you do is you cut into the stem just slightly on two uh, two forks, and then you stick them in each other and then wrap them, and then you hybridize them that way. Really? Like in With an entirely different style of pepper. Awesome. I've been you can doing do that a lot with apple of, trees, too. Yeah. You, you can do like with a, cherry trees, too, when they're real small. Yeah, I think so. You can have, like, a whole bunch of varieties. You can actually, I think you can graft a pear branch on an apple tree. I heard that somewhere, that you can you can mix species, but only with apple and pear, I think, which is, I would really love to try that. Like, I'm all about lemon and orange. Huh? Can you imagine doing a lemon and an orange? Yeah, that would be awesome. I wish I could grow oranges and lemons. I I would have to grow them indoors, which it is it is totally possible. I know people in Quebec here grow citrus indoors. They just yeah. have to like, yeah, they just have to to get it in the cold room in the winter time, and then bring it out, like I do with my strawberry plants. So yeah, leave it in the greenhouse all winter long. Yeah, I couldn't do that because it's like minus thirty in my in my greenhouse in the winter. Ooh. Your greenhouse doesn't get sunlight in the winter? It does, but in the nights, when it's oh. there's no sunlight, it gets really cold. Like everything Throw some, Throw some heat lamps in there. No way. It's going to cause way too much. I'd much rather hibernate them in my cold room. Yeah, heat it's lamps like, aren't that expensive, depending on which ones you get. You can get the UV heat lamps. Yeah, it's too much, too expensive. Maybe, maybe one day if I have like a really good energy efficient, like greenhouse with glass, maybe, but like with plastic, it sucks. It sucks. Yeah, plastic still does pretty good if you get it, uh, if you double layer it, it insulates pretty well. Yeah, with like a, a little fan inside yeah. to like get that air, com air chamber, probably. Hey, but still, oh, hey, Mark, what's going on? We are still on. We had uh here, I'm gonna send you if you wanna hop on. I did my uh my live earlier. We were talking about harding off plants with the uh, Eskimo in Alaska. She is so interesting. And uh now I'm just here to uh chill, have a chill beer. With a beer. Yep. I guess I'm gonna end all my live streams like this. <laughs> Might get more views that way. More views and more beers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Speaking of which, let's see here. Nope. You have uh, 4,000 hours yet, Mallory? No way. I am at 1,800 hours, okay. which last week I was at 1,700. So I'm going up like 100 hours a week, sort of. Well, that's not too bad. Yeah. My last video that I posted out was my French video and I posted it everywhere, like on Reddit and everywhere. And it's, my French videos are doing really good. Um, I got, I think I busted the 500 views in one day, which is like yeah. really good, really, really good. Yeah, I watched it, didn't understand it, but I watched it. Yeah, thank you. You're awesome. I can kind of more or less estimate what you're saying in French by, you know, what you're doing on video for the most part. <laughs> I love Mark. He always hops on laughing. Notice every time he hops on a live, he's laughing. Because you didn't notice what I was doing when I'm sitting in the basement. I'm going, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> no, yeah, I didn't. I was trying to claw my way out of the basement. And as soon as I do that, oh. you bring me up. It's true because I like I noticed something moving. How's everybody doing? Doing swell. How are you, Mark? Uh, I am sore and sore and more sore because Aww. I started listening to Mal and now I'm digging holes with shovels and just oh. <laughs> Mark's afraid of man you will labor. No, he isn't. 
<laughs> yeah, he called me earlier. He was looking. He was like, "Okay, what do I do with this?" And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I've never tried it that way, but I think it it sounds good. Now you could try that." <laughs> it sounds realistically like it should work all good. Yeah, definitely. But I didn't watch that video you sent me though. Um, I I didn't have time. I really didn't have time. I've been building a chicken coop all day. What you guys got to go out? Really? Say, can't you just modify one of the uh, spaces in the barn or the shed for a chicken coop now? Yeah, I'm actually I'm building a little spot for my two laying hens, and then I got another spot <laughs> for my 35 uh, broilers. But I'm gonna like open a window for them, and then had to get a ramp for them to go up there, and then go through the window into the pen outside. You know, so I didn't have any of that in there, so I had to like build it all. So I built a door today on there and i'm using all recycled materials i'm i haven't bought anything i've been like searching for screws some of them are all twisted <laughs> like i i do not want to go to the store for this at all hey johnny how you guys all doing I, there's a lot of people that are in the chat i see that are asking questions and uh north shore yeah uh garden claw I tell you what, I'm really thinking about going renting an excavator. Makes things a whole lot easier. Yeah. Well, you mean out there, Mark? You don't have any friends with an excavator? I do, but I got to drive 30 miles, and I don't feel like going and hooking up to a semi and loading an excavator, and it's just way too big. The one that we have at home on the farm is way too big for what I'm doing here. So, oh. uh, You got a massive backhoe exca excavator or just like a little John Deere? Well, the, at home in the family, we got like a 16 valve big old Mitsubishi backhoe. Not a, not a. I was actually thinking I got a, I got a buddy of mine coming in with a log truck in the morning to drop off six quart of wood on top of my other stuff that I got going on. What? Okay, I got. A log. Got yeah, a just in uh, high country fly life. I come here a few times. We'll get to know each other, and I'll, I'll, I'll get you on here for sure. We've been we've been uh, going back and forth through live streams on I think you were on Food Forest and then you're on uh, Rocco's channel and so I'm just like starting to get to know you a little bit so once like maybe another shot I'll I'll hop you on here. What time is it over there in New Zealand actually, Tristan? Like What's the word goal? Where? Word goal? <laughs> I had to go let my dogs out. Wasif is asking, where are you, Mark? I'm in Wisconsin. Or did where did I just go? No. <laughs> where are you from? Oh, right there. Where did you go? I went to look at his channel. It looks like he's from, uh, like, um, way out there um i like i don't know where are you from tell me where you're from actually because it's there's a language i do not understand on your channel so let me know so if i look at this right and i did my research right 30 inch beds with a two and a or two foot walkways that's a whole lot of shoveling yeah my walkways <laughs> are 18 inches well, you're little. I'm not. It's it's the ergonomic size for the standard market gardener. That's like here. Let me get you the page in the book. Well, yeah, they they just didn't have people that were six five and um three foot wide. That's the problem. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so you only need two and a half feet wide, Mark, or you can That's walk sideways. So like crab. And small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll oh, he's in Pakistan. Wasif is in Punjab, Pakistan area. What? Pakistan, Asia? Asia? Pakistan? I'm mixed up. Yeah, I'm not a geographics major. Here, I'm going to go look at it right now. I don't even know where half the states in this country are. On YouTube land, my, my video is so fuzzy. I don't understand that. No, it, it's fuzzy on StreamYard, too. Yeah. Well, no, mine's clear on my side on StreamYard. Oh, that's weird. It's fuzzy. 
Yeah, it's yeah, a little I'm, fuzzy, Mark. Yeah, I'm I see seeing a little fuzzy screen. on my screen. Yeah, Why is I that? see. I see you perfectly clear, Cliff. Punjab is in Greenland, Asia, Pakistan. So, oh, oh my gosh, so oh, it's yeah, really you are fuzzy. early in the morning in New I'm Zealand. I'm a little fuzzy too. I know. Oh yeah, I really got to pause that. Asia, Pakistan. I've never. I didn't think there was a Pakistan. Like I didn't think Pakistan was in Asia. I'm just so. Oh, I never. My my video quality's never been that bad. Weird. You still yeah, got storm over at work? No, it's clear. Up crystal clear up. That don't make sense. Hmm. No, as if I guess I'm Let not really good with geography. With ge geography, I guess I'm really not good with geography. I uh, skip too much school, probably. <laughs> yeah, don't feel bad. Like I said, I don't even know where half the states in our country are. I, I, I know the general direction for most of them, but I have no idea where they're located. <laughs> Oh. I never seen it. It's like it, on and off, your your screen is like fuzzy and then it goes down and it's clear and then it goes fuzzy and then it goes down and it's clear. It's like on, on, my, on my side on StreamYard, it's crystal clear. Hmm. Weird. That's odd. Yep, nope, definitely. Oh, so it's in the afternoon in oh, okay in New Zealand. I thought it, I thought it was like three thirty in the morning. I was like, oh my gosh, what's up? But it's like. Yeah, that makes sense because it's like 11, almost midnight here. So, yeah. Man, you are like no, way into my hour wise. No, this is all your fault, Cliff, because tomorrow she say, I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got Johnny up here, Mark. I literally almost got Johnny up here, and he was trying with his phone, but his phone wouldn't let him. Oh, that'd be cool. I know he's always commenting and being really supportive, and I was like, "I need to have you on here," and yeah, it didn't work out. So, yeah, tomorrow I got to finish digging a trench, and then I got wood coming in. I got rain coming in, so I got to mow my four acres of lawn oh. before I go to work. Oh my gosh! We're gonna be up at the butt crack of dawn mowing that lawn. I was actually thinking about tonight getting some floodlights and put one of my headlamps on and going out mowing in the dark. But I'm like, you know what? There's just way too much iffy stuff going on out there to be taking around, <laughs> going around. So I said, I'll wait. Yeah, I could have used a headlight. I need to go outside and bring all my seedlings back inside the greenhouse. And then I'm going to be in the dark. Can you get you one of these? Ugh. Get you one of these headlamps. O light. Yep. Oh, like, that? like literally a flashlight on your head. Yeah. Huh. They're super bright. Usually you see them like 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 what Tyler was showing on his video, like with that little. Yeah, the smaller ones. Yeah. Yeah, I have a smaller one like that. This one is two thousand lumens. It's wow, stupid bright. That's low level, and then here I'll, I'll point it down so I don't blow out the screen don't be uh oh shoot that's turbo that's way late yeah i gotta charge this one on that on that setting on that turbo setting it'll actually melt your tent sides if you're too close like oh the my gosh it'll melt it it gets hot it's gonna burn but my seedlings <laughs> you probably only want it on like this setting here which is like the third highest Otherwise, it'll. Uh, it'll but it's really kind of funny because there is so many people that are emailing me right now and asking about hardening off. Yeah. Send them over to Mallory's channel. She did that today. Although it's in French, so the uh, English. It's not in French. It's not in French. I thought that one was in French. No. Oh no, that was today. Never mind. Yeah, you know it was just now, like an hour ago. Hey, Nicole, how's it going? I was thinking of your transplant one. It was in French. 
No, yeah, that one's coming out in English uh, on Saturday, but I like I missed a few spots. Like, I completely forgot to to translate, like, refilm a couple things in English. I have to tweak it a little bit. It's it's a lot of like getting used to filming both. Like, in Eng I forget sometimes. I'll just film it in French once and then be like, "Oops, <laughs> I forgot." I'll tell you what, filming that, digging that trench and all the work that goes in, that's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. do you in that I trench? I, I showed you what? a picture of everything I did by hand, didn't I? Oh, what did you think, Cliff? How big am I digging a trench? Yeah, how deep are you digging that trench? It's, uh, well, whatever a shovel is, so I think that's like eight or nine inches, and then it's 30 inches wide. So... And it's probably it's fifty feet long by hand. A cubic yard of dirt every foot. Yep. Yeah, mine are fifty feet too. I did a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did nine rows of thirty by fifty all by hand. Uh like the right. first year. The second year I got here. That video I sent you, it has uh how to uh um amend. Amend your soil yeah. and then where to, where to send a soil test to because you can actually send them on and they'll give you a, a whole breakdown of everything that is wrong and what's yeah. high, what's low, and then they'll tell you what to get to amend what it is. So you put in this square footage of your garden, how many how many runs you got, and it'll tell you exactly how to do it. So I thought that was pretty cool. You know, they're in most yeah. places. I don't know the price yet. That might be a little bit pricey, but I didn't I didn't check into that. Yeah. Everybody told me, Mallory, when you get there, check your soil, go test your soil. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to plant and I'm going to see what happens, you know? And turns out I've been doing pretty good <laughs> because I've never tested my soil. I've always amended my soil with what I had. I guess, I don't know. I guess God loves me so far. So he really blessed me with an abundant piece of land and really good soil see and so, i got i got crap soil so for us it's like i gotta really do some fixing i'm not saying god doesn't love you mark I'm at least sorry. you have soil <laughs> my yard's full of dirt and clay i know he loves me <laughs> <laughs> he gave me the place of that all right but yeah oh. definitely like the the way that i that i did it though was um i flipped my sod over and so, like, the first year, it really gave me a boost of nitrogen and, like, having all the the uh, the grass one-on-one -on, -one on top of each other, it decomposing, that really fed my soil for the first year. So I, now I think I'm going to do that. I, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to – because I'm going to – I got two one-acre plots that I use for, like, pasture. And the one that – first, we're going to pick the dandelions off of it. And then we're going to go and I'm going to go in there and mow that. But I think that's what I'm going to do yep. is, is I'm going to make a layer between the two of them and put it in there. But I'll tell you what, from shoveling, it, and this is the other thing that's really crappy around here. Every shovel you hit is a rock. Oh. My chest is hurting so hard because I'm pulling rocks like this out. And I had, I, I had my uh, our middle child, he's got a straight shovel. So every time I've taken... And, and take a four or a, a shovel load out. He was coming in in front of me and cleaning out and flattening it out. And he's like, you know, every yeah. every tink tink. I'm like, oh, I'm just getting sick of rocks. I know. If you have a chance, go get an excavator. Seriously, it'll save your back tons and it'll be so fast. You just scoop up once, throw it on the left side. Scoop up once, throw it on the right side. Then you have like two. The, the problem is I got to get through three three fence and my my fence all around my stuff is twelve feet tall because I I live on a deer farm. Oh. And my garden is in a back is in the middle of that to keep everybody out. So that that means I'm taking down fence. I'm taking down poles. I'm I'm, I'm cutting holes to get an excavator in. I was just like, you know what? We got three quarters. We got three quarters away of the first row done this yeah. morning. Apparently. It's a so, lot of work. I just it tried is. typing in StreamYard. <laughs> Does it work? You tried what? I was trying to type in StreamYard on the chat, but it's not working because uh, yeah, you can only read the chat. Because uh, Wasif is asking if he can leave without us being angry. I'm like, yeah. I was about to say, yeah, he can leave all if he wants oh, to. Was, was he it, have he... to say. 
If you don't angry, please. I, I don't get it. Well, he says uh, uh, he was watching. Watch. If you scroll up, it says, uh, can I leave if possible, ma'am, dears? No. Uh, don't get angry, please. No yeah, way. I'm not going to be angry if you leave. Yeah. We all have a life. And I'm just like on here to chill with my with my people and to get me a little bit of, you know, interaction and social. So, I mean, you can stay if you want. You can leave if you want. There's no pressure. Simon, I can't plant potatoes because then I get potato bugs. Yeah, we got. I, I have to go every morning and grab potato bugs, and I'm I'm switching them in another spot this year because, like, as soon as I planted them last year, they got potato bugs. They were really early okay. last year. Like I like I told our youngest son, or our middle son, he's he's wondering about what kind of job he wants to do, and I'm like, you know, it's a lot of work, but if we get this set up. You know, you can you can sell fresh vegetables right from the house, and yeah. if I get it set up right, you know, because we everybody hates weeding. You know, I, I hate it with a passion. As soon as I get done with one side of the garden, I got to go back to the other side and start all over. So it just irritates the crap out of me, and I don't use any kind of weed killers. Everything is all natural, so it can get pretty hairy in there at times. And now thistles are coming up, and I was digging. I don't know how many of them things came up already, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, thistles grow fast if you give them water. They just got two and a half inches. Yeah. yeah they'll, they'll you give them about four days, and those suckers will be about four to six inches. Those things grow stupid fast. We got them down here, too, and they're annoying. They're they're actually really healthy for you if you if you, if you you cut the thistle out and you eat the actual stem, it tastes like a uh, cross between uh, uh, cucumber and asparagus. Yeah, I'm not dealing with those things. The, the ones we have down here, Mark, send out thorns like rose bushes do. Oh, yeah, so do ours. I just, take my big old, I just take my big old knife and go right down the side of it. And go. There you go. I like your piano, Mark. Like that? Yeah. She hear me play the piano. I'm pretty good at it. They go right now. Do it live. But he can play uh, chopsticks like a pro. <laughs> I want to hear you play piano, Mark. Can't then, I, then you get a strike. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever figure out, Mark, why they uh, wouldn't let you broadcast for like a couple weeks back when you were having to do the uh, gaming live streams? Just, YouTube is just, we won't even discuss that because I, I'll say words I shouldn't say. Because YouTube is just so it's those words, huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Millennium Homesteader, good to see hey, you. Phil, you want to pop on? Yeah, are you more available now? Who? Phil, Millennial Homesteader. Oh. Well, oh, I'll tell you what. I I got some words for YouTube. They weren't gonna like me. You, didn't well, you have, you have to tell YouTube, YouTube to like me because earlier on the chat, I said to YouTube so that the bot knows. I love YouTube. YouTube, please love me. He's going to share my channel out. That's what I wish YouTube, you would do. Anymore. YouTube can kiss my right cheek. That's <laughs> what I think of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Mark. And it all changes. All I do is, is uh, do a couple videos in gaming, and everything is fine now. And then now they say I rate my videos perfectly. So figure that out. Yeah, I don't know. Stupid YouTube algorithm. Okay, wait. I'm. He says I'm available. Let's put some clothes on. All right. Yeah, we don't want to see you naked there, Phil. No, if you're going to do that, you need to go to Spicy's channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Here's the link. Boy, let me tell you, that was a fun first time on a live panel for myself. On Spicy? Yeah. It was a three-hour topless chat. What? Are you kidding yeah. me? What no, I'm that? not joking. Go back and find that one. I think he still has it up. But yeah, my first time up on a live YouTube panel was topless with Spicy for like two and a half hours. When was that? God, it was a couple like a, a couple months ago. 
So what did you uh so what did you say for hardening off? Are you going two two or two, four, six, eight, ten, or how did you tell them? I do it on I do it on seven days. And what I do is I hop them in my greenhouse from the lights to my greenhouse in shade for 15 minutes. And then, and then I bring them back in the night, that night. And then I I go out another day, bring them in the sun for 15 minutes, bring them back in. You guys want to know back a out. easy way to do it? I'm sorry? Do you want to know an easy way to do it? Do you have an easier way? Yeah. Sure. Throw it out on a cloudy day. You can keep them out there all day long. And if you get three days that are cloudy, it's like having a week of actually in the sun. Yeah. And you, as I do the two... I do the two, four, six, eight, ten method, but it can be a really, especially if you got a lot of plants like we do, mm-hmm. it can be a huge pain in the butt. It is. So what I do is I try to get it in on a cloudy day and I can keep them out there all day long. And it's like actually eight hours of that process of hardening off. I wish I could do that. It's just that like the process for me to bring them inside the greenhouse for the sun. If I bring them in the greenhouse too, too soon, they burn with the sun in the greenhouse. So, and at that moment, they, it's too cold outside. There's still snow on the ground. Yeah, it's, I, I do, I do the uh, cloudy days. I'll do yeah. that for like two days or three days. And yeah. then I'll start going into the sun more. And I got a plant here now that he, it, these tomato plants need to go out. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, they're getting big. Mine are outside right now. Yeah, your tomato plants were pretty big the other day when you were doing the uh, trimming. Uh, I'll show you this one. It was kind of hard to watch that because you had the uh, the uh, awkwardness of what the reason why YouTube was being all weird on stream the other day was making it hard to watch. Because okay. the box was over pretty much what you were doing and you were in a dark area. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. on a- Oh, uh, green screen. I got to hate it. Okay, hang on a second. Mm-hmm. This thing's dripping all over me. Looks like he's got one of those magic plants. It's a magic plant. Grows real fast. There you go. All right. All right. Where is the that, top? That of beast, Mel. Look at yeah, that. That, that is awesome. That's a days ago. It's beautiful. Very you know, beautiful. The other thing, too, guys, if you, if you didn't notice... Check your new your new growth and look how small the leaf thickness is, and then go to your outer leaves. That's how you know if your your plant's ready to be hardened off because these leaves will get really nice and thick, and you'll actually you can tell a difference. I don't know if I can show this on the on my camera or not, but you know the new growth is really thin, but yeah. these outer leaves now are getting nice and thick. Yeah. Isn't that to produce the uh, canopy for it? Because uh, I know the fruit on those grows under all that stuff for the most part. It's a good sign for hardening off because it, it's like us having um, sunscreen on. The thicker the leaves, the better the plant's going to be. And if you can take the time to harden them off correctly, um, you'll get these massive plants like yeah. this. I've never had a plant that big hardened off before here. Like mine always start out in the garden smaller than that because I start them really? later. Yeah. But they, I always have a really good yield though. These these guys are um, actually what I'll do is pretty quick here. I'll be taking him off and I'll be taking him off, yeah. and then when he gets bigger, because I'll plant these guys because every one of these little hairs that are up here is waiting to see soil because that's a root. And what I did learn, I was telling Mal the other day, for you today. <laughs> Is that if you want your your tomatoes to be just full of uh, flavor and stuff like that, the more root that you can get in that ground, the better it's going to be, the better it's going to taste, and the stronger it's going to be. Yeah. So by the time I put him in the ground here, which I'm hoping to get him in here pretty soon, you know he'll be up to about right up in here somewhere. Yeah. And then this is all going to be in the ground. So you're going to bury that thing in the ground basically like eight inches. Yep. The more roots that I can get in there and let them spread out. But see, there's a thing too. There's a trick that I just learned is you put azomite down and it helps to promote root growth. So when you do that, this thing really will take off. We did it the first year and these things were just massive. I mean, I'm, you're talking eight foot, to, my tomato plants yeah. on the average will be between eight to, eight to nine feet tall. I'm going to have to try that because every time 
that I've planted my roots down, it took too long for them to produce. And I'd, I'd harvest green tomatoes mm -hmm. and I'd have to like ripen them off at the end of the season. So this year I was like, you know what, I'm just going to try to do it directly at the same soil try level. Try it as, as, as a mite. Yeah, I'm that in try there. that. Yeah. Well, here's here's another question. Did you uh, when you plant when you transplant, do you score the uh, roots to promote the root growth, or you just stick it in root ball and all without doing anything? I don't do anything besides putting azomite in a hole, and then obviously amendments are huge because you, you know I want to get something in there that's going to get the trickle effect going so that I'm getting the nutrients because because tomato plants for one thing they're hungry. They will, they will take anything that you can give them. You know, they love food. The more that you can give them, the best, that's going to be the better. But it depends on if you got an indeterminate or a determinate plant. Like mine, I just, like two and a half months before my season's over, I'll cut this top off, which is right here. So this is my top, and that's going to stop my plant from growing upwards, and then it's going to start to produce. So that's, that's the other thing. And then like Mal taught me too about the suckers, you know, keep that, that first set of suckers in there to yep. kick off the next set here. And pretty soon this guy's going to start to show the suckers in here. Yeah. So you keep two branches and it's like two tomato plants. Mm -hmm. in one. But you know, this is, this thing's already the size of a pencil and he's, he's only uh, not even uh, just about a month old and they're all like that. Than a pencil. That sucker huh? looks almost as thick as your finger. Eh, no. Yeah, no. I'm gonna show you my upside down. I got, I got fat thumbs. I'm a big boy. I didn't say thumb, Mark. I just said finger. This is my greenhouse. Everybody left me. Welcome to my chat. Psych. Just kidding. Everybody left. See this massive guy. There you go. That's a big one. <laughs> it's gonna set flowers pretty soon. Are you gonna pluck them off? Are you no, going we're going in the greenhouse. Oh. Yep. You know, I always wanted to do them upside down plants, and then I'm like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all that's been my theory on that too, is, is like you just think that all the water is just gonna fall out the bottom and then the plant's gonna die because the roots are growing up to the sun instead of going the other way around. Really mark that background. Yeah, why not? Ah, uh, it's planting season. I'll put that one up. Yeah, that tomato. Oh, there's Phil. Here, wait. Let me see. Hello. Hey, I made it. Yeah. Can you, everyone, hear me? Yep. Maybe. Everybody, meet Phil. Meet Phil. He's in BC. He's in How's it going? Good to meet you. Awesome. awesome. What you planting, Phil? Um, today we planted some Jerusalem artichokes and some comfrey. Awesome. Um, I have no idea what that last one is. Some comfrey. Comfrey is like a really good plant that brings back the minerals in the soil. I don't eat it. I just chop and drop it. I don't know. What do you do with it, Phil? Uh, I give it to the chickens, and um, I don't know. I just planted it because everyone said plant comfrey. Yeah. So. I'm planting comfrey. We awesome. just, it's super easy. You literally just throw pieces of root in the ground and it grows like a weed. Yeah. So I just put out a whole ton of uh, arugula too. Almost looks like thistle. You guys want something really good, plant arugula. It's super healthy for you. The minerals and benefits of arugula is amazing. Um, and I just found out, I just did a little study here on a, uh, mustard greens and i could i was blown away by the health benefits of mustard greens too yeah. you can get them in like a salad mix all of those together we were using uh, microgreens we were growing all of them as microgreens that's and, what i did in the winter time yeah but now i'm gonna put it out in my big garden because of the leaves are actually when i the mustard green leaves i've got the um dinosaur gr uh, mustard greens so they get about the leaf will get about this tall and about that wide oh yeah yeah. Oh, I have a Simon Forger saying five gallon buckets are cheaper than those bags. I actually am growing in those bags because they were given to me. So I, I, I would not spend my money on those things for sure. 
but they were given to me. So that's why I'm using them. But I'm really yeah. happy with them so far. What is okay. your bucket to grow those in? So Sorry? No, no water. Water. There, there's nothing in this world that's more peppery than what's in this jar. <laughs> and I love hot stuff. So, you know, um, my nasturtiums, I, I plant nasturtiums for one to keep the bugs out. And I love the way the flower tastes. Uh, that is one of the when people freak out when you go pick a flower and you just start chomping on it, but it's really nice and peppery too. I agree. Nasturtium flowers are great. They, they're yep. sweet and spicy at the same time. Yeah. You'll yeah, never. My wood sorrel. No, thank you. That stuff tasted like garden grass. I don't know why. It's supposed to have like a lemony flavor, but legit, that stuff tasted like garden grass. <laughs> then you didn't have the right stuff. <laughs> There's actually called, there's another thing, Cliff, it's called sheep sorrel, and most gardeners put this up. It's a lot bigger. It'll get about this tall, and that's got the rhubarb uh, taste to it, too. So you might want to check that out. You can actually plant that, and and it'll just grow like a roll. Well, I, I Googled it because I wasn't sure because I had, like, threw that out there a couple of videos ago to ask my fellow homesteaders. You know, nobody responded on that, so I just said, that's yeah, screw it. I'll Google it. And but yeah, it's yellow wood sorrel is what I'm growing in my barrels, and that stuff like legit is probably eight, ten, twelve inches. That ain't the wood sorrel that we have here because it's only probably going to be about four or five inches. And then it the the cloves in the morning time they'll look like hearts, and then when they open up they actually look like a clove, and then at nighttime they close black back down. Yeah. I'll have to check that, but yeah, it, it's like a three-leaf pattern on a stem. Kind of looks like an umbrella, but each leaf looks like a heart. And then the flowers on it, like, I don't know, about an inch wide, yellow flowers. Yeah. It really looks like it on your video, though. It really looked like wood, sor wood sorrel. Yeah, no, it's that variety, I think, was called yellow wood sorrel. And it said, according to the thing, it said it's supposed to have like a lemon, like a lemon undertone. And I tried it. It should it should taste like a rhubarb. It should be really it should be really tart, like a like rhubarb is. I've never tasted rhubarb, but I've, I've tasted lawn clippings because I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> Julian, my brother says we had flowers in our greenhouses already. So much sunlight. Of course, I mean we have a lot of sunlight here too. The wood sorrel looks like a clover. A yeah, it, it is exactly like a clover, but what's cool about wood sorrel is it'll actually, the two leaves on the other side will flip over, and in the morning it looks like a heart. Oh, yeah. yeah so I have a weird variety. I must have a weird variety that's, like, specific to my region because. Maybe it's your soil. Eating, you're probably just eating clover. If I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> Big guinea's probably got red clover in there, and it is called a wood sorrel. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, Nicole, the hotter the better. Yeah, we haven't planted anything really. We've been so busy. I've, I've tried to get a garden going, but yeah. with a garden, if you don't commit to a garden, if you kind of just plant one and you're too busy, it just turns into a mess. Yep. So we're kind of um, apprehensive because I think we should have a garden this year, but it's most likely going to be like potatoes and maybe yeah. some carrots or something like that because I just I can't – commit to to looking after a garden i just i don't have the time yeah That's just plant some fun stuff for the kids and stuff yeah, yeah. oh yeah they love gardening for like five minutes yeah <laughs> hey Mel, we, we gotta get johnny up here because he's got a good degree in gardening and he had his own business i know i try yeah, getting well, i don't know if you guys can see this or not i'll try to bring it up as like good as i can that's wood sorrel okay. yeah. that's wood sorrel yeah that's, that's, yeah, that's exactly what i have, I have. But that stuff tastes like grass clippings. It's probably your soil. They're growing oh, right next to strawberries. The and strawberries. I'm not, I'm, I'm really not joking. Those things are like eight, ten inches tall. Yeah, your strawberries are gonna taste like crap. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> actually, those strawberries actually pulled some strawberries out of there, and they're actually pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe it's your climate. I don't know. Could yeah, be. my 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 wild strawberries they they're so sweet. Actually, I like them better than the commercial strawberries that we that we got. And uh, oh, my camera's gonna be. Well, there is no enough. Try to see if I can this again. It just takes twenty hours to pick one cup. I know, right? <laughs> I have fields and fields full full yeah. of them. I wish I had fields full of strawberries. I like picking cherries. They're about the easiest thing to pick. Like six well, cherries. 
asshole. <laughs> my bird pick my birds pick them all for me. I don't get any of them. Oh, I haven't picked cherries in so long. I had some growing up, but like the, we had really high winds because of hurricanes, and then they all fell down to the ground. They're Ooh. only now starting to grow back. So, we don't really we don't we can't really grow sweet cherries here, but we're about forty minutes from the Okanagan Valley, and oh. they grow everything right there. So you can just go yeah. over whatever you want. Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Enjoy being. Yeah. Hi, nice. Thank you for being here. Uh, Johnny, I'm going to get you on one of my live streams with me and Mal and you, and we're going to talk about some gardening tips because uh, that knowledge you got in your head there, I think that'd be pretty good for the home yeah. city community. Do you guys have a separate monitor for all the comments and stuff? Because on StreamYard, I can't see anything. That oh. go, to live, go to live comment on StreamYard, yeah. but yeah, I got oh, I yeah. Have, oh right there. <laughs> I had I detached my live. It was causing me lag. Yeah, I detach my chat from my YouTube and I drag it to my other screen, so I have my live chat um, right there. I don't use the Streamyards chat; I use my YouTube chat. You lost me at drag to my other screen. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of cheat because I got a full studio, so I don't. Yeah, Mark's got like four screens over there. <laughs> Three. And a and a big. Yeah, I was gonna. Four. This is I got I got three I got three monitors and I've got a thirty two inch big screen TV so. <laughs> I have three then because I got a forty inch TV over here in the corner, but I don't have an aux cable running to it like Sty does. So we're all nerds. Pretty I've much. got a fifty five inch TV, but that's for the kids. That guy down there's a bigger nerd. Bigger nerd. Put on top of the head. All that's playing on that fifty five inch here is Dora. And YouTube, yeah, exactly. Kids. Paw Patrol. Yep. This is uh, you know, my computer was built for doing this. That's why there. Mine was mine's a gaming laptop, so different purpose, but still usable. <laughs> my beer is almost empty, guys. Good time to crack another one. Mm. <laughs> He's going up tomorrow. Going. Oh. Ben no, you know I can take a lot in. Actually, I'm a, I'm a Quebecer. I'm a real, real Quebecer. Like Canadian. you're Canadian. I'm, what? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what you do. Let's see how much you can take in. You take one of these, and then all you got to do is I do a is, shotgun. Yeah, do a shotgun, and we'll see how much you can take in. <laughs> <laughs> one beer. I'm never gonna do that live. Over. Just heads up, I'm never gonna do that live. Mallory just gets hammered. <laughs> I never thought I never thought in a million years me being as big as I am that one beer that I shotgun would mess me up that bad. Yeah, I know. I had a lot of carbonation going in y'all at once. I suppose I could sit here and uh, go pound for pound with Mallory, but uh, shots don't exactly, you know, equal a whole twelve ounce beer. Wait. <laughs> I really, you're on live I, on YouTube. You've reached a whole new level. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no way. I'm never going to do that. I, I surprise a lot of my friends. Like, they come out, to, like, my 30 year old birthday party. Okay. People came out here. I had a really big bash. And I was the last one standing at like five o'clock in the morning. And I had cleaned up everything up. Like, and I was still drinking. That's like when I when I set my mind to it, like I was a bartender for so many years. And so like if I decide that was a long time ago, Mel. What? 30 was a long time ago. Oh yeah, it was so long ago. I'm 31 now. Whoops. No, I'm talking about me. 30 was a long time ago. Yeah, I know. So I could probably take you, Mark. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> she's a she's a third of my size, yeah. <laughs> You'd be really surprised. You'd be like seriously. You'd be really surprised. No, I wouldn't because all I do is say, "Hey, Mel, drink this," and I give you some uh, um, Everclear. No, no I make, no I make real moonshine. Before, so. I'll just give her one of them with like some apple and some peach or something like that. She'll be, like, "Oh, this is so good!" and start drinking it, and that'd be all it. <laughs> no way. You, you don't know me, Mark. You don't know. Time, I've I've seen some big boys that can that can all drink me, and they had some some shine, and they're like, "This is so good and it's so smooth." And then all of a sudden, I see them tip over, and I'm just like, "Yeah, that's so smooth, ain't it?" 
I think the trick is I know when I know how to control myself. I think that's the trick is like I know when too much is too much, when to drink water and like well this is like we, we do it in double shot glasses and that's all we do. And I'll I'll like it's a slip in, a sipping glass. And my father in law, he's like, Oh, this is so good. Yeah, that didn't turn out too well for him. Yeah, you gotta be careful with the drinks. Yeah, like that. Yeah, this was a this is like two and a half, almost three shots. This glass is a this thing. Look at how wide that sucker is. It's good to get ice cube in there because <laughs> drink no ice cubes. What is this watered down whiskey? You just take oh, a whole. I'll tell you what, you take some old uh, apple pie that's cold. That's cold. Oh boy, let me tell you. <laughs> or better yet, you take some. Uh, um, I just talked about this the other day. What was it? Um, Oh, I'll think about it and I'll come back to you. But I'll tell you, it's like Kool Aid with a kick. Oh, you told me about that. I think you were telling me about that. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Oh, uh, oh my God. Uh, uh, beer bongs. Oh, my God. Juice. Beer bongs. I haven't had that in so long. Jungle juice. That's the thing is that well, I don't do like drinking games. I don't do like good those drink. big shots, those big beer bongs and stuff. I just drink all night. And like I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like I don't know. Oh, Johnny! The last, last time that I made, I made some lemonade, some moonshine lemonade. Oh my god! I tell you what, people thought that was the best thing, and like 15 minutes later, everybody is falling over, laughing, giggling. It's <laughs> like, <"Oops." laughs> Yes, there you go, Johnny. Use Everclear and everything. No, oh my god. Uh, Ever, Everclear tastes nasty. Everclear tastes like water, or at least smells like water, and then you get that punch after you swallow. It's like getting kicked in the throat by a mule. Yeah, Ben's been trying to make some wild beers, and uh, he's been trying to ferment a whole bunch of weird things that he's going up in his hikes. And we tasted one the other day. It was so disgusting. Oh, my gosh. It was so disgusting. I was like, you're not going to make me drink this. He's like, well, I put all this sweat and effort into it. You got to drink it. Oh, here we go. I figured out it. Sumac. Sumac tea with shine is, oh, boy, all. When does it go from, like, a kombucha or just a fermented drink to a beer? Is it a totally different process? With with your sugars. You you have to add a natural, like, yeah, so you have to ferment the sugars down. So we had maple, uh, maple water that had sugars in it, and we added some maple uh, maple syrup that we had boiled down and so it made some alcohol in there. I don't know what percentage it was, but it was there was certainly something in there. But we made one with some wild blueberries that I had in the in the freezer with some yeah, some maple water and it was so good. Like I drank a little tiny, tiny little glass and I was like, okay, there's something in there. And then we we, we uh, found it down from bird sap. To Which start I out think- with some apple cider or hard mm-hmm. cider smell, and it worked from that way. That's what I did. Yeah. <clears throat> I would really love to have some hard cider. Hey, wait. I'll be right back. I need to go to Nature get Hall, beer? and then I'll, I'll go get – no, I'm going to go get that fermented birch sap. It's just pure fermented birch sap, and I'm going to taste it with you guys. So I'll be right Jason back. Jason loves some moonshine. Nicole's – my grandpa makes homemade apple uh, cinnamon shine. That would be, that's like apple apple pie. Yeah. I thought she said she was going to be right back, not leave the uh, chat. <laughs> leave the chat. Where are you from, Fox? Fox at Outdoors? Uh, New Mexico. New Mexico. What's your first, What's your name? Uh, Cliff. Cliff, cool. New Mexico. Yeah, we're up in Canada. Quite different climate from you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you guys even have to harden things off down there? Uh, we've got... I mean, we can get down to like the twenties, but that rarely happens. And I haven't seen actual snow in this state for more than two decades. That's your winter gardening. You want me to send you some? I would love some snow, Mark. That would be awesome because I miss the cold weather. I'll tell you what. You come down here next year, and I'll take you on a seven-day extreme winter challenge. I'll do it. I'll freeze my butt off, but I'll do it. I won't pull a Tyler and not wear warm socks. Well, it doesn't matter about warm socks. He just he doesn't have the 
using Walmart gear didn't work. Uh, he said he was only going to do the Walmart gear one night. I wasn't expecting him to do a whole week with that crap. Yeah, that was that was scary. I mean, I was actually worried about him because he, you know, losing your mind, not thinking straight. I mean, that was that was close. Walmart gear is one thing. Having tight boots is another. You can have the best stuff in the world if your boots are too tight. Your your feet are going to freeze. Well, see, I did my winter survival challenge in Alaska when I was in a service. So when uh, and then when I take these guys out with me, it was it was a whole different experience. What are you doing? A little bit of this. It's a fermented birch sap. Oh, there we go. Like crystal clear Pepsi. Yeah, well, I put in, we uh, figured out that the container that you put it in, like, when it's done, doesn't really matter as long as it's airtight, so. Yeah, those are pretty airtight. Yeah, I wore, I have some um, Dunlop work boots, and I had those little booties that go in them, and we were we were out for, like, a 15-hour day, minus 20, and my feet were so cold, and I took those little booties off, and it just gave my feet room, and they warmed up right away. I actually get my boots from Canada. They're Ravens. Oh, yeah. And then I got some baffling boots also, and they're from your neck of the woods, and they're actually made for extreme. I mean, my boots are rated, I think, for minus 50 or 60 degrees. Um, and yeah, baffles are good. And that's all I wear in the wintertime. They're light. They're awesome. And, but these guys came in there with stuff from uh, our side of things, it, and it just – it wasn't working out. I think besides you, Justin was the only one that was actually prepared for that. He actually had decent winter boots. No, yeah. his shoes were soaked. He tried somebody else's. He, he got some shoes out there, and uh, he was not a happy camper. Uh, I'll put it yeah. that way. And um, they were he, – he had to put them and put them by the fire every night to dry them out with my bath lens. The only problem I had is that when I took them off, they froze. Oh. And then that sucked in the morning trying to put them back on because for the first night I couldn't get the liners out in the morning time. They were froze tight. And I couldn't get my foot back in them. So I had to put them by the fire and get them warmed up and so I could put the liners out and dry them all. So I'm gonna Mark, you got to get your other days out there on YouTube land. What? You got to get your other days out there on YouTube land. The problem is, is that my mic shut off. It was so cold because of the cameras oh. that I was using. So I got no audio, so I got to dub everything. Oh. Yeah. So I'm going to have to head out. I got the kids are making noise upstairs, and I'm looking after them tonight. So. All right, what? Phil. Yeah, Thanks Hannah, for hopping so, on. So I got to go um, on babysitting duties. All right. That's good. Well, one day I'll, I'll invite you, you and Leanne will talk. All right. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Take See care, you. Phil. Yeah, I think the boots I have, Mark, uh, I, I know I showed you guys when we were doing that. You got a boot? I got some of this. I think Mark wanted some of this because the minute I popped it up, he was just like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, I, I, you know what? The challenges was great, and the stuff that we did out there was awesome. <laughs> but when uh, your audio was – the, I don't know what happened with my mic because I got a rogue mic. I got one of the top line mics. It just got too cold and it shut off, and I was just ticked. Darn, that sucks. Oh my gosh, I hate I hate it when audio bugs out. Sometimes I'll I'll be out with my gimbal, and I'll I'll put my my plug in my phone, and it's half plugged. I'm like, no, <laughs> are you kidding me? It didn't ca catch anything. Well, this oh. is a pro mic, so I was like, I was p word right off. I was like, you got to be kidding me. I bet. That's what happens sometimes when you buy gear? You, you ne not necessarily the gear. You could have just gotten a faulty one. That's no, I, I, I had my somebody new to my channel. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce her channel. He um, be beach. Yeah, I've been so sorry. I had that mic for years, Cliff, and I never had a problem. It was just, it was, you know. 30 below for days and days and days and days. It just took a toll on everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, these are the ones that I had. These are these are my winter boots. They're uh, Keens. These things oh, are look at that. 20. Oh, Renaissance yeah. Warcraft. How's it going, buddy? Haven't seen you in a long time. 
Hey, Jesse, you want to hop on? What's up, Jesse? I'm just, I'm just finishing my stuff here, and then we're going to hop off. But if you want to hop on, you can. I was just drinking some fermented bird chap, and I was looking at that girl's we'll keep, show. We'll keep her up till midnight. My it, time. It, we're past midnight here. My time. Hello. My time. <laughs> you still got what? 40, about an hour before it's midnight over there, Mark? Got a half an hour to go, yep. Yep. Yeah, see, these are the ones that I'd be wearing if I did the winter challenge with you guys. These things are waterproof, and they're thermal insoles, so they got like a wool liner on the bottom. And then I got some good wool socks I can put on. Hey, Jesse. I think I'd be just – I hey, wore these out here in the winter, and my feet were sweaty. Yeah, well, when you get down to yeah, like 30, 40 below, that's a different story. Well, the, 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 I got the, uh, the advantage on these ones is I got this little, I don't know if you guys can see it right here, but uh, I got my little D ring on the front so I can actually put snow gators on these suckers. That's cool. Yeah. Mine got that too. Actually, I gave Tyler my gators so that he could wear them with his boots so that he wouldn't get all full of snow when he's out there. How are you doing, Jesse? Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just checking. Oh, that stuff is I'm, still uh, Oh. You're late night like I'm me, in, Jesse? I'm trying to edit Friday morning's video, but I'm having a lot of trouble with transferring files. I'm having a lot of trouble with my internet. It's like sure. nothing's working right now. Oh, no. I'm sorry oh. to hear that. It's okay. It's just, it's it's just okay. YouTube. They hate everyone. Man, I got really, really yeah. bomb internet here. I got fiber optic on the top of my mountain. Nice. Really? Yeah. Jeez. I, c I couldn't believe it. Like when I first got here, I was on satellite, satellite uh, explore net, and I was like, yeah. "This sucks, man! Like I can't do anything with it." And it was costing me a fortune. And now, like I have unlimited internet, and it's so fast, and it's so great. Hi, uh, Crunchy, Hawaii. Grace, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you. Yeah, Grace. We have a whole bunch of people. You guys are sticking with me. That's so cool. Thank you, guys. You guys are giving me some watch time. So I was on, a, Jesse, I was on with a Eskimo in Alaska earlier, and we were talking about hardening, hardening off our plants and everything. Yeah. And then and when she left, it was beer time. So, Hey, guys, don't forget, too, if you're in the chat, hit that thumbs up. Yeah, awesome. We're um, We're doing the same for our garden. We don't have, like, a homestead, but we have a, a small garden where we – grow all the stuff that is expensive as hell in the supermarket right um because we figure that's a, a good way to grow some of our own stuff but not throw our effort at the stuff that is very very affordable um so we've got a very tiny greenhouse that we use for for hardening off and then uh, we were going to plant this weekend but we didn't end up doing it we were too busy okay so one um, day this week we'll well, Life is busy these days. Yard, Jesse, you got you can put a pretty decent sized greenhouse back there. Yeah, it's it's not very large. It's it's a small little guy like this. No, I'm saying you can put a bigger one back there because you got a pretty decent sized yard. Yeah, well, no, I used to be a pretty decent sized yard. Then my wife and child decided they wanted a pool. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, it takes a lot of space. Lost a lot of square footage on that one. We sure as hell did. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> just just so the left of me or, or that way, there's a big old pool. Is there? Yeah. We, uh, but as a pumper, I'm thinking, you know what? That's 3,500 gallons of free water if something happens. So I'm like, mm, okay, we'll put a pool in. Mark, in the wintertime, <laughs> you have unlimited water with all that snow. Yeah, That's I true. do, but in the summertime, if something happens, like, Instance oh, today, they're putting in the new, the new uh, uh, highlight, season. and uh, I was just like, there, everybody's running out of water, and I'm laughing because we can go get whatever we want. I was gonna say, didn't they? Did they? I know they had the restrictions for you over there, and then they lifted them. Did everything go sideways over there? Because I heard a lot of uh, after they lifted the restrictions, everything went kind of psychotic. They're all nuts. I was replying comments here. I just, I'm just laughing because people would, uh, 
are losing their mind over this. And I've been telling for years on my live streams and, and, and everything, you know, I've been showing people how to take care of this and they didn't listen. So now they're, I'm just going to start, I need a secretary that I can send emails off to because when you wake up in the morning, you got a hundred emails every time you do a live stream. And how do you do this? How do you do that? What do you do this? What do you do yeah. here? Like, like go back and watch the videos. You, you don't want to be, I try to answer everybody. But it's just like I can't. It's, it's impossible. Yeah, I hear you. I feel you. Like I'm having a hard time answering my my video comments. <laughs> like I'm like I went through. I went in my YouTube suit and I was like, oh my gosh, like forty messages. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to read all of these and answer all of them. I'm just like overwhelmed. Like my phone. My phone in the morning is it's constantly ding 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 yeah. ding ding ding, and I'm like, really. Yeah. What you know? What I, I try to help everybody out. I try to get them the most information that I that I know that I can help them. But there's just I can't. You only go so far, and as yeah. your channel grows, they get more and more and more and more. Well, that's the thing, though. Once you get bigger, you just redo the videos to be like for all my new subscribers out there, viewers. Here's such and such, and you just every couple of months you just redo some of the random videos you have on there because those are the ones that people ask the most questions about. And actually, it's kind of funny because right now, the pickled eggs is, is a huge one. The um, and I don't understand this one, but the cold weather chicken coop is another huge one because people are starting to realize that the homesteading and the chickens and everything else is a huge uh, bonus. Yeah. Um. So. Free meat and free eggs. Yep. Yeah. Tristan, yeah, I get a hundred a hundred comments on some videos. Yeah. I mean, at one point you have to decide like, okay, I'm gonna do like the little heart and then like when I can I'll come back, you know, and like you have to read through them and then just like answer, be selective, you know. Yep. It's hard. There's the only way to do it, otherwise you get overwhelmed with comments because you'll be sitting there. Uh, commenting on the brand new videos and you'll still probably get 50 60 comments from past videos yeah it's all right johnny take care and buddy then, and then you get nothing done because all you're doing is answering comments yep. hey, johnny thank you for stopping by next time next Night, time you'll be on here. Here. see ya yeah he's in flight well, now that you're the, you Ooh. gotta get the uh, super chats up there mal what are you gonna do that what when she hits four thousand watch hours Oh yeah, super chats. Yes, yeah, only when you're monetized. Aren't you monetized yet? <laughs> no, I'm not monetized. I'm only at eighteen hundred. That's why I'm still live right now. What do you mean you're only at eighteen hundred? Yeah. Watch hours. Power. Yeah. Oh. That's why I'm live yeah. right now. It's 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 easier to get the subs than it is to get those watch hours sometimes. Yep. I'll yep, tell you why. So. This is. I told you what to do. You get on that excavator, and you make a video of that, and yeah. there, there will be people that will be watching, and you know, you'll know you be up there with us with you got 60,000, 70,000 views on that video, and that's yeah. your playmaker. I told Don't you, I, I, went out, I went out with the excavator, and I filmed it. I'm just not in the shot. <laughs> How can you not you gotta, be in the shot of your own filming? You got to get... Uh, you got to get yourself, you got to put the camera set up so that you yep. climb into the excavator. Yep. And then you put your GoPro in there so that you can actually see you operating the excavator. Yeah. There you go. I know. You need to get a magnetic uh, mount and you need to mount the GoPro inside the excavator bucket. That way they can see you digging out that dirt. Yeah. I had everything set up. Okay. I had the camera on me and a harness. <laughs> and I hurt. had. And I had Don't my cell edge. phone with me, and then I had my camera set up. Everything was there. I just was not in the shot. I need a camera that I can see myself in the shot. Like, cause I I moved my excavator because I wasn't placed oh. at the right spot, and as soon as I moved it, we couldn't see me anymore. So I was like, <laughs> dang it. Yeah, I'm just all right, guys. I'm gonna get back to editing this this video. Yeah, uh, gonna see if I can get this done. It's all right, Jesse. Uh, Friday. Yeah. Gotcha. See you Take guys. Care. All right. Take all right. care. Take care. See, see you on the next not video.
Yep. So I was really bummed out about that. And like, I seriously took my phone after and I filmed myself and I was like, you know what? I was not even in that shot. Like, you guys are not even going to believe me that I did that. Like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, hey, Sony's Place. Sony's Place, I'm so, sh I'm so happy for her. She got, uh, she got a video that took off. Nice. I'm really happy for her. I'm still waiting for one of mine to go, but I doubt it's going to go with a gardening video. Start with <laughs> small, with short one. videos, Cliff. S start I with was actually trying to do the last one. was going to be real short, but... Yeah, I saw the two-minute video I one. I my yard. I know. But you have to do, like, little short clips, interactive. You know, you got to you gotta captivate your audience. Just and that's, even I have a hard time doing that. I can't do a 45 minute video on my phone. Every, it, it, every time I do a video, it like decreases my space. So my videos get shorter and shorter. No. But like 45 minutes, nobody's going to like, honestly, people are, uh, I have such a short attention span and I watch so many videos that like a 45 minute video, I'm practically not going to sit down and watch one unless it's I somebody was, that I really, honestly, really trying to keep that at Now I heard the truth. Right there's the truth. Yeah, I mean, you, you, when you're when you're trying to grow your channel, start with short, short and sweet. Just like okay, getting to know you. Oh, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hello. Very trouble. Yeah, short and sweet videos, Cliff, and like just like show different shots, show your face. You know, you switch from like you showing. You have a head start anyway because yourself. you got all of, all of my clan. You got all of Tyler's clan, so you should have a head start. When you make yeah, you guys are awesome. Well, that's kind of funny, too, because, Mike, for the longest time, I was just sitting at, like, 45, like, no, like, 37 subs. And then between Mark, Spicy, Phil, and all them guys, Tyler, I started just – my numbers just jumped. But over the last probably two weeks, I think I've gained, like, maybe six more subs. Yeah, that's the thing about Ooh, community. Yeah. We gotta look because I think it might be. Yeah, I checked mine. Oh, I don't know. I did. I broke the threshold. Awesome. We're at forty-seven hundred. Awesome. Nice. Hours are our subs. And so. one thought I had: if everybody just go back on Mallory's videos, hit play, watch them all, put them on while you're in bed doing something else just let them play through that will totally boost all the hours and give you the time you need without even if you've watched them five times i have watched a few of them more than once all of y'all's videos i've watched now more than once and when you guys mention the fact that the time is down and you need more or stats are down this is that happening just hit y'all's video playlist hit play play it all through Thank you. Go about your business if you don't want to watch them. Or you've already watched them, like I've said. Thank it you, It doesn't Nicole. hurt anything, and it helps. It does. It really does. Thank you. I but I think there's, a, there's a maximum amount of times that you can watch from your IP address. And, uh, like, I think it's, like, maximum five times that you can watch until, like, the YouTube doesn't count it anymore. So, I mean... It helps if a lot of people do it, but if you do it like 10 times, then you're doing it a lot, like just blank for nothing. So, yeah, the, uh, the algorithm will actually pick that up and actually stop increasing the amount of hours watched. Yep. Guess what? I am what? exactly two away from hitting 4,700. What? Awesome. Two Congratulations. Everybody grab all of them red and wild edibles. Sony's place. You drank your beer too early next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next time. He was drinking it slow too because she's been milking that beer for, it was like about 45 minutes. Me? Cool. Yeah. I drank it already. I'm, I'm drinking well, I know, but it was like still about 40. It still took you about 45 minutes because we're what, sitting at two and a half hours don't now. Don't feel too bad. Mal, grab another one. <laughs> this is like number five or six. I don't even remember at this point. <laughs> well, that part is only had about, what I had left for that Hennessy was maybe about a shot and a half. If that, yep, I'll make yeah, well, I got a big day in the gardens tomorrow, and Ben oh, only lets me sleep at seven thirty. So I got to work in the morning. I'm gonna have to roll out of bed and just kind of just do what I gotta do. Yeah, that's what uh, Red Bull and uh, coffee's for. No Red Bull oh, for me. Coffee, yeah, coffee. I can't do the Red, Red Bull. Bull. 
I do my good food with. It helps out the military. Gets me a little bit of weight without the over amped feeling. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. I know too many people. It feels shaky all day. Here, Cliff, I'll tell you this. I know three people that had massive heart attacks from slamming Red Bull. Well, yeah, it's because you're not supposed to slam four of them in a I'm row. I'm having a hard time hearing you guys. I'm oh. not sure it's my phone, but... Maybe your finger's on, on top of the mic or the, the speaker. Yeah, see? High Country says, I don't think it counts if you watch it more than once. I'm sure the algorithm picks it up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, too. Like, YouTube yeah. smart. You know, the computer mm. smart. Yeah, after you've watched that. the video once, it I gives remember, you the I just remember it. a few times a few other YouTubers asking to do that, to <clears> play, <throat> well, maybe it was just certain videos, actually. That might be correct, too. I don't know. Like, you, know, you can play the whole playlist. I'm sure you haven't seen all of my videos, you know? I mean, you could just go right, to my playlist right. and, play, and play them all. I mean... That. Right, because even if you do press play, I've noticed it doesn't play them always in order either. So uh, the ones you skipped, perhaps, just go back and see the ones that you've already watched. Were there ones in between that yeah. YouTube just skipped you? There go you back go. and watch those. Yeah, see, so what I've heard is basically the um, the YouTube algorithm is once you've watched a video, it'll only give you that one watch for the video. It still might increase the viewer watch hours, but you still have to engage in the new interactions for viewers. So even if so the same person like watches the same users. video like four times, it's not going to count it as four different views. Yeah. It's only going to count it for the one time. There you go. Because yeah. it's one user. Yeah. So what yeah, you're trying to get is new interaction between new users on your videos. You can still get the watch time hours but it's not going to give you that new user view that makes sense yeah and that then makes Mark, a lot of sense actually this is the only thing i drink red bull with oh my gosh my brother has, has a, a song about Jaeger bombs i should try to yeah, find, it. find it it's only you plant oh you got your plants in today that's awesome Oh, awesome, my awesome. brother's song is called Beer Belly, but he says, like, I drank Jaeger bombs. It's really funny. <laughs> All right, guys, I got I to gotta bail. You know that's thick. Tonight, and I got to get up Love early. Yeah, I got you, Mark. Me too. I'm going to try to well, share Mark, out this song real quick. And then, nice to see you. I'm going to try to share. Can I share a song? Um, yeah. Get no, copyright striked. No, it's my brother's song. Okay, then you should share, be good. share, share. Can I do that? Because you, you may think of my my brother's really old song. It's really really old, Ooh, but there's an odd taste between Hennessy and Jaeger. Can I do that? Oh, Cliff, thanks for that one. You, you didn't see me doing the chat the whole time, Nicole. Sl okay. duh, taking that Hennessy. Yes, I think I you can hear you this. I said that looks thick. I knew it was gonna be thick going. Can you down. hear that? Nope. nope. You have to share audio. No. Okay. Yes, yeah, share audio. Let's see. Yeah, you figured it out last time, Mallory, when you were doing the yeah. video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's so old. Like, don't laugh. Of course. Is my not. brother here? Go for it. Can you hear that? Yeah. Peanut butter and jelly. Peanut butter and jelly time. I had to share that. Sorry. Oh, that's funny. Peanut butter jelly for a beer belly. Yes. That's hilarious. <sighs> you made me think about it with your Jaeger bombs. Have a good one, Jesse. Take care. Hope you get yep. your editing issues solved. All right, Jesse. Have a good night. Sony, High Country, Grace, everybody in here, Nicole, Mark, Cliff. I'm calling it out too. Okay. Well, good night, you guys.
two shots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys so and much cheers. for being here and hanging cheers. out with you. Guys later. Catch you all later. Have a good one. All right. I'll be going next. Wasif is still here. Cool. Jason McDaniel. Awesome. See you guys. Good night. See you guys. Have I'll a good night. I'll be sneaking on just so I can do my last giveaway check. All right. Bye. You guys. Thank you. Have a good night.